times I came at a bad time. No, no. I think you couldn't have timed it better. 234715 system time. Very punctual, Kafka. Elio always tells the exact future. So what's with the explosion just now? Was that also part of his script? Uh-huh. 234459 system time. The pulses from the explosion cause a massive breakdown from the master control system. You did that. No. The Antimatter Legion did it. They completely invaded the space station two system hours ago. All right. So do we need to fight the Legion? I don't know. Elio didn't say anything about it, so it doesn't matter. Got it. So from now on, I'll be in charge of this operation. Copy. Can you let me have some fun this time? Our last few operations turned out to be pretty dull. Sorry. I'm afraid there is not much I can do for you. Our task this time is just to place the target properly. But if you want to go look for some fun yourself, I won't stop you. I mean, after all. <laughs> After all, Elio didn't put it in the script. Why would it matter? Who's this? Herta? Yeah. She looks so young. She was already famous in the last Amber era, no? She has to be at least a hundred years old. She's a member of the Genius Society and an emanator of Noose the Erudition. She could probably age backwards if she wanted. <laughs> yeah, I seem to recall that over half of the Genius Society's 80-odd members had a normal death. Wasn't there someone who lived for a dozen days or so? What was their name? Oh. <laughs> That's pretty normal. Aren't the immortal bosses in games always waiting for the protagonist to come kill them? <laughs> Immortality is not always a good thing. <laughs> oh, what an alliance joke. When did the antimatter legion become so weak? I could only attract this much. Did you really want the entire legion to come here? Oh, this lot won't be able to slow down the Astral Express crew. Relax. A doomsday beast is also here. Time to say bye. <sighs> Cleaning up other people's mess isn't in my job description. You know, Kafka? Yeah, yeah. Where did you send it, Silver Wolf? Some random coordinates. Not important. You care about where that Void Ranger ended up? Of course not. I'm just amazed that this fancy technique of yours is usual. <sighs> just a little trick of tampering with the data of reality. I wouldn't call it fancy. What were you looking at so intently just now? Let me see. Herta's Toys, a catalog featuring the space station's collection of rare items. They've got a lot of interesting gadgets. Like what? There's this gun. It can rate any creature within its crosshair as a score from 0 to 100. Uh, doesn't sound very interesting. Aren't you curious about how much you would score? I kind of want to know mine. Fine, I guess we can swing by and play with it if it's not too far. What's our destination? Go down the corridor behind the door on the left. 
There's a room where some kind of rare item is stored. That's where we can find out where the Stellaron is. The central area of the space station is up ahead. There will be lots of Legion Void Rangers there. Okay. Hold it. Someone or something is up ahead. Looks like we're the ones getting ambushed. But they're the ones getting besieged. Not a single soul here. Impressive evacuation work. Did Herda organize it herself? According to the access history, she hasn't logged in here for over six months. The evacuation was directed by the acting lead researcher, a girl named Asta. It doesn't ring a bell. Oh, right. Elio said we wouldn't run into Herta. It seems she really isn't here. Where's the Stellaron? Elio's script doesn't include any info about the location of the Stellaron, which means in the future he foresees... We would find the Stellaron in a non-physical way. This space station is packed with extraordinary objects. I wouldn't be surprised if there's one that can make it happen. Well, hiding something extraordinary with something extraordinary. This is pretty Herta. I assume you know what to do. I mean, you've read the catalog for quite a while. I've got all the clues we need. The only piece missing is a simple trick. Help me investigate the terminal in this room. Our item might be inside. Okay, the stage is yours. see the whole space station on the surveillance screen, but not the Stellaron. Even if you could, it'd be a trap. Herta doesn't display her collections. Huh? I can't see the memory storage for this terminal. This is the monitoring room. They must have deleted the records and made a run for it. Classic. <sighs> Make your way over here then. There's no point in trying to search like this. So, got a master plan? I'm all ears. It's a matter of hacking the surveillance system directly. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Herta's collections aren't in the system, so anything unaffected should be our target. Simple, crude, but effective. Look, found it. Huh, what's this? Item number 211, Line Spot. A simple light deflecting field. It allows an object in its field to pass unnoticed, but if a different item ceases to be obvious, the object gets revealed. So, Herta hides her collection with something as simple as this? The simplest method is the hardest to spot. Isn't that our motto? thing number two. The data suggests it's just an ordinary hologram, but it has an added layer. Let's take a look. Don't worry, this place won't be our grave. Interesting. 
she's a member of the Genius Society, all right. Huh. It has its own security system. I guess even for her to Stellaron is no ordinary rarity. Can you get it? Of course. Even the genius Herda can't compete with me when it comes to hacking. Good. Then I'll also count on you with the preparation of the receptacle. The receptacle's ready. Your decision. <laughs> Elio said this decision will bring about lots of changes. He also said, it must be you who makes it. Want to give her a new name? <sighs> there we go. How much does she remember? Hmm. I'll remember you. Time to get up. Remember me. <sighs> Listen, you are in a daze right now. You don't know who you are, why you're here, or what you're going to do next. You think I look familiar, but you're not sure if you should trust me. None of that matters. All you need to know is that I'm leaving. And you will be left all alone on this space station. From now on, you needn't think about your past or doubt yourself. Listen, in the near future, you will encounter all kinds of perils and hardships, but you will also have many wonderful experiences. You'll meet companions who will treat you like family and embark on surreal adventures with them. At the end of your journey, all that perplexes you and troubles you will resolve. This is your future that Elio has foreseen. Do you like it? The next stop to pave the way for the future that is written. It's like weaving brocade. You and I can only add one gold thread each time, but eventually, we will make a gorgeous pattern. How long do you think you need? According to the script, the Astral Express crew is arriving soon. We should avoid being seen by them. I know, Silver Wolf. Just give me another minute. I must leave now. Don't worry, someone will come and find you very soon. Just go with them. You won't remember a thing except me. When you have a chance to make a choice, make one that you know you won't regret. Weren't the coordinates sent out from the space station? Who cares? They're here and alive. Do they look like a mannequin to you? <sighs> Weak heartbeat and pulse. March, you better do CPR. Uh huh? Uh, I, uh, I've never done it before. Don Hung, you do it. <sighs> Wait, stop it. They're awake. <sighs> Are you all right? Can you hear me? Do you remember your name? Aw, oh, this isn't good. Can you try harder? I'm sure you can at least remember your name. Nice to meet you. My name's Don Hung, and this is March 7th. This space station was just attacked by the Antimatter Legion. We came to help with the rescue at the request of lead researcher Asta. Back to the master control zone. 
Asta and the other researchers have gathered there. Plus, that's where we parked the Astral Express. Don't you worry. We'll protect you from the monsters and clear up this mess. You and March go back together. Arlan from the security department lost contact in the vicinity. I need to find him first. Oh, all right. You stay safe. Hmm, maybe you should bring this. The Legion are rampaging through the space station like a pack of wolves. This trip won't be a walk in the park. It's better if you have something to protect yourself. Just a suggestion, though. You're safe as long as you stick with me. This place is full of fancy little gadgets. Herta's collection. I really don't get why she'd go out of her way to collect them and then leave them here to gather dust. Uh, it's the Antimatter Legion! So these crazy jerks made it all the way here. You're stronger than you look. Seem to be quite the fighter. So we'll take that elevator on the central platform to go down to the master control zone. Do you know the way? Um... I noticed that you're not wearing the space station staff uniform. Do you really work here? Memory loss, huh? You must have been injured. Never mind. I won't ask if you don't want to talk about it. Let's go. I'll take you to the safe zone. I knew it. Nah, I think the elevator's broken. I pressed all the buttons, but nothing happened. <sighs> Too bad Don Hung's not here. He's like a walking encyclopedia. He knows a ton of complicated stuff. Maybe even elevator repair. Uh, I don't know that one. Why are you here? And how did you get here before us? I took another route to the upper level, and I saw you guys from up there. Arlan is in the control room. He's been injured, but not fatally. You found him? Will he know what to do about this elevator? I suppose as the head of the security department, he should know. Then let's go talk to him. Hey, you're all together? Yep, we're from the Astral Express. Oh, did Madame Herta send you to help? Uh, it's just a coincidence. We came to deliver the rare relic Herta trusted us to find. We didn't expect to arrive during an invasion. Why is the Antimatter Legion targeting you guys? It seems they just ignored the surface of the planet and came straight to the space station. I... have no idea. The Legion came at a very suspicious time, almost right after the security system suddenly failed. Lady... Lead researcher Asta immediately began to organize the evacuation. I was supposed to cover everyone as they evacuated, but... I didn't expect to end up failing in this task. Don't be too hard on yourself. Your leg and dominant hand were injured. It was a wise decision to hide here and avoid a head-on encounter with the Legion. Yeah, most of the staff have been evacuated safely. So right now our highest priority is to return to the Master Control Zone and plan a counterattack. So, do you know how to use the elevator? I couldn't start it. After the evacuation was complete, the elevators were all shut down to keep the Legion away from the Master Control Zone. Since Lady Asta sent you to look for me, I assume she must have given you the encryption key for accessing the elevator system? Oh, right. 
She did give me some sort of card. <sighs> March. But where did I put it? You... found the key, we should get going. We can use that console. Let's go. Hold on. I only activated the elevator on the highest floor. We'll have to go there to use it. Sorry. The space station was entrusted to Lady Asta by Madame Herda. I must do this for the safety of the master control zone and the staff there. So I'll have to trouble you to take a bit of a detour. Sincerest apologies. Uh-huh. You're not coming with us? My leg is injured. I'd only slow you down. I'll stay here and shut down the elevator once you've made it to the master control zone. You won't slow us down. And you should be able to shut down the elevators from the master control zone. Right? Agreed. She and I made it here safely. And now we've also got Don Hung. We're more than enough to protect you. Let us worry about the Antimatter Legion. You just follow us and keep yourself alive. Thank you. The repulsion bridge has been shut down? Yes. Just all the enemy. More or less. things. Are these light cones? I thought only the Interastral Peace Corporation had rare stuff like this. No. Light cones are Garden of Recollection technology. They allow you to carry memories around. Very potent enhancement items. I heard the corporation paid a lot for the usage rights, but I've no idea how Herta managed to get hold of one. They were acquired legitimately. That's all I can say. Take them. They're very useful in combat. Shiny! Ooh, is that it? We've reached the elevator already? That wasn't too many monsters. <laughs> <laughs> always have to get this exciting. Anyway, at least you're back. March, Dun Hung, you've been through a lot. Oh, phew. Himeko, what took you so long? That last wave of antimatter legion came at us like a swarm of locusts. Have you ever tried shooting locusts with a bow? I wouldn't have made a difference. My orbital cannon can deal with a whole bunch of enemies at once, but I couldn't just blow up the space station with it. Herta would not like that. <sighs> Are you all right, Arlam? Asta's been worried about you. I'm fine. A quick patching up will do. Thanks for asking. I'll report the situation to lead researcher Asta immediately. Bye. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Himiko, navigator of the Astral Express. In other words, she's in charge of where the Express goes. March hasn't been any trouble for you along the way, has she? Think carefully about how you want to reply to that. Two Don Hungs on our team now. <sighs> Please leave me out of this. <laughs> Look at you all. You've already gotten really close. 
Come on, Aston's been worried about all of you. Projectile radar tracking normal. Telemetry signal frequency unusually high. Maintain at normal levels. Our measurements predict that the Legion is about to unleash over 10 waves of continuous attacks. Everyone, brace yourselves. Asta, we're back. Oh, I'm glad you're all back safe. Arlen just told me about the situation at the storage zone and about his injury. Thank you for all your help. In times of disaster, I realize more and more that the space station's researchers are its most valuable assets. Alas, we were ill-prepared for such emergencies. We should have built up our security and combat departments. But on the other hand, the entire crew of the Astral Express seems to be extraordinarily skilled. What is the current situation on the space station? The situation is under control for now. The damage to our security system was minor. The intruder only managed to alter a small amount of data, so it was easy to fix. The real problem lies with the researchers. They trust Madame Herta wholeheartedly and never thought that the space station would be breached by the Legion. Hmm. A broken spirit is far worse than a broken body. Let's go speak with the researchers. Right now, the space station can't afford any more unexpected turns, especially from within. Have you tried contacting Herta? I sent multiple letters, all met with silence. You know her, Himiko. The space station is but a mere warehouse for followers and rare items. She doesn't really care about it. I knew it. No matter. I'll also send a letter to Herta and tell her that we've brought the rare item she seeks. At least that might get her attention. Oh, that would be of great help. I need to leave. I need to run from this forsaken... No, it's impossible. I can run from yesterday, I can run from today, but tomorrow will always be one step ahead of me. Look! The obstacle detection terminal has recorded 142,856 attacks. The next count will be 142,857! I know in my heart that when I see that hopelessly beautiful cyclic number, it will mean the poetic end of my life cycle. How insightful. Yes, of course. The closer you approach death, the more you appreciate life. I will pull myself together. Thank you. That was kind of you. All injured researchers, please stick with Miss, Miss March 7th, and Mr. Don Hong, please proceed immediately to the Master Control Station. Lead researcher Asta is waiting for you. Take the express and leave. I'll stay. But... Let's go. My dumpster pit shield won't hold much longer. You all need to hurry. I'll be here. You've got to fit them off. You hurry. We lost communications. Are you thinking of going back? Well, let me remind you. That's the Doomsday Beast. The Legion's planet destroyer. The space station is Herta's creation. As long as the Lord Ravager doesn't intervene, there should be no problems. But we can't just run away like this, right? The Doomsday Beast can rip off the defense shield like tearing paper. And Herta's not here. The station's defenses are too weak to stand against the Antimatter Legion. Either way, the Legion has the blessing of the Eon Nanook. They came prepared, and everyone here is not. That's why we have to leave and take her with us. Hmm? She's that important? She's the one who can help us turn the tides. Of course, I may be wrong. Hmm. As you say so. 
All right. What should we do next? This is the supply zone where the maintenance crew works. There's a path here that leads to the railway platform. Let's head over there and meet up with Welt. Mr. Yang? Mr. Yang's here too? Didn't he stay on the express? The Astral Express tracks our coordinates in real time. And with such a huge change in the space station's movements, there's no way Mr. Yang wouldn't have noticed. Mm-hmm. I can almost guarantee that your Mr. Yang is already on his way. Right now, we might be able to handle things if it's just the Doomsday Beast, but if the Destruction's Emanator were to appear... Let's hurry up and get out of here. I'll explain later. Wait, march! Huh? Huh? The Doomsday Beast. It's really here. Get down here! Uh, careful, everyone! Let's talk somewhere else. <sighs> Is this the space station? Himeko should be nearby. You're awake. I had Marge and Dan Hung stay by the express to keep an eye on things. It's almost time. She should be arriving any moment now. Well, I've only been gone, what, a few months? And the space station is already in this state? Welcome back, Herda. This is the true master of the space station. Genius Society number 83, Herda. At least give me a proper introduction. Genius Society number 83? Of all my outstanding achievements, that's what you want to mention? What you're seeing here is one of my puppets. I'm using her to talk to you. So, this little twerp has the Stellaron now? Huh. Hmm. I'll have to take a good look. Hmm, truly amazing. I built a whole space station just to contain this unactivated Stellaron and keep the blue from disaster. Yet someone was able to achieve that with this little twerp's body? How did they do it? Moreover, the Stellaron is still very stable in her body. You're right. This little one's body truly is strange. <laughs> Compared to me, you are. How old are you even? Don't judge a book by its cover, Erda. 
Case in point, that puppet body of yours is actually much smaller than her. That's beside the point. Hey, is this one the same kind as that March 7th? If that were true... Can I bring her in for some research? That's not up to me to decide. You can ask her yourself. Hmm. This little twerp's pretty financially motivated. Oh, I like it. All right, give the poor child a break, Herda. I'm very interested now. So there's almost nothing I won't accommodate. A Stellaron in your body? How interesting is that? Be grateful that I'm offering to help you out. This is a service even the IPC can't buy. You understand now? Herda wants you to stay in her space station. Well, I'm going to have to modify your wording here. This little twerp can only stay temporarily until the research is done. Or maybe I'll lose interest halfway through and they can just beat it. And after that? <laughs> Not my problem. Uh, you also have another option. The Astral Express. If you want, you can leave with us. The Express has its fair share of experiences with Stellarons. The thing you're worried about and the answers we're looking for are one and the same. Besides, we can come back any time to let her to conduct her research. She's absolutely fascinated now. Hmm. Well, works for me. Keeps this subject fresh, too. And that way, I won't need to keep worrying about this little twerp all the time. <laughs> Perfect. would be to get on. You're not doing me that big of a favor by staying anyway. Just remember to come back often. Make an appointment in advance with Asta or Arlen so I can make time to study you. There's no need to rush into this, Herda. Asta's in the master control zone. Let's let her have a talk with Asta first and decide for herself. I'll be waiting for you on the platform. It's no hurry if you still have things to do or someone to see. Come find me when you've made your decision. So, have you thought things through? Then come with me. <sighs> Let's go! Oh, time to get on. fiction movie or something this stellaron thing in my Are you to the stars <laughs> <sighs> i've done stuff like that before but it wasn't stars for me though it was lights when i first woke up after being rescued from the ice i could see clusters of stars in front of me i reached out for them automatically but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. Who knows? I don't remember anything before that. Who I am, where I'm from, my name. It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm 
hoping that one day I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Uh... <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about 10 minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself. And falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you! Uh, we're... Hello? Hello, hello. <clears throat> All passengers, please return to your seats. The train is about to make the jump. Hold on, everyone. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. Five, four, three, two, one. Yurilo 6 has become? Uh-huh. So, that snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Oh, spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven-day stopover time extended indefinitely. The complex locality of this world has been affected somehow. The star rail has been blocked off by something. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a stellar run, as always. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them. But there's no need to worry. This isn't the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Even if we don't know much about them, at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Eurelo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. We've got to get busy! I'd like to entrust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions, and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Hey, 
that's not the spirit. <sighs> so it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for Urelo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. Are you doing okay after your first jump? Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. You'll feel better once you get used to it. I enjoy being alone, especially when I have important work to do. I went through the Express's database, and it seems the environment on Urelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. He said so? Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. By normal, I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. As I expected, before you came, Whenever March wanted to go anywhere, Himiko would make Mr. Yang and me go with her. And even after you arrived, I didn't suppose I'd be the one to be... liberated of that duty. I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Urelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail. Right? I see. You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. Did you talk to Don Hung? How'd it go? Really? I find that hard to believe. Relax. Don Hung and I are experienced trailblazers. We got your back. Well, are you ready? When I first saw this planet, I thought, a world covered in ice. Could it have something to do with my past? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Still, the ice that trapped me was six-phased ice, a very rare substance. I don't think you can find it on your average planet. To be honest, I think I'd be kind of annoyed if I found out this was my home world. It looks freezing. Pretty girls aren't frost resistant. What? Is there something on my face? Nah, I was just imagining all the fun we're gonna have here. <laughs> uh, I feel sorry for this world. First the Stellaron, and now you. All right, here comes the Urelo 6 Trailblaze team. Urelo 6. We're here. <sighs> it really is one big snowball. Hey, get your own metaphor. <sighs> Snow as far as the eye can see. Which direction should we take? Based on the coordinates, the target should be up ahead. And then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Me neither. If only we had a snowmobile! 
We never get to bring anything cool from the Express. Do you remember what you did to our last snowmobile? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Remember, we should stay vigilant. You know very little about this world. Calm down. Between the three of us, nothing will stand in our way. I mean, come on. You've got a Stellaron in your body. I have my special six-phase ice powers. And Don Hung... Uh... He's got that mysterious past thing going for him. So if people start creating trouble for us, they're gonna regret it. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> let's go. Braving the unknown? That's the real spirit of trailblazing. <laughs> I got this, March. Uh, someone's got their head stuck in the sand. Or the snow, in this case. They just need a helping hand. Ouch! My fine fellow, was that really necessary? He's crawling around in the snow a crime these days. I mean, come on, surely. It doesn't warrant a spearing. But then again, how can I blame you? I mean, I caught you off guard. It, it had to happen. You could even say I deserved it, huh? Besides, I made a gallant group of new friends as a result. <laughs> Is Captain Jafard around? Uh, he, he's an old buddy of mine. Who? Wait, you're not Silvermane Guards? Well, why didn't you say so? Turns out we're on the same side after all. Pleasure to meet you. The name's Sampo Koski. Excellent, I'll remember the name. I never thought I'd run into friends from the same line of work out here in this frozen wasteland. <sighs> Business is bad these days, but... Fear not! Sampo Koski isn't interested in hoarding. There's more than enough treasure to go around, so let's get rich together! <laughs> Say, why don't we join forces? I have reliable intel the main strength of the Silvermane Guards is being deployed to the front line. This is a golden opportunity! Come now, friends. I can understand the mistrust, but there's no need for the charade. Then again, I know the rules. Vigilance is the name of the game in our profession. It's my fault for letting my enthusiasm and sincerity get the better of me. Anyway, a meeting like this has to have been written in the stars. Ask me anything you like. I won't skimp on the details. Still make it snappy. You're never more than ten feet from a Silvermane guard. don't know? The Silvermane Guards are Bellabog soldiers, enforcers, and police. Let's just say they're not the most flexible of people. And they like paying visits to folks in our line of work. Seems like you guys really are new to the business. <laughs> to be young and naive again. How about this? As a senior in the field, which I'm sure you don't mind me saying, I'll give you some free guidance. There are ways of doing things in this profession, and you better get familiar with them. Moving in the shadows, finding the goods, pricing your stock, hiding from the guards. There's an art to all of it. No need. Why don't you just take us to the city? We don't really know the way. The city? Already? They haven't even started trading yet. Well, showing you the way is easy enough, Missy, but it would cost. But, but it would be my pleasure. Kindness is Sampo Koski's middle name. 
Follow me, friends, and uh, keep quiet. We don't want to be spotted by the guards. So why were you hiding from the Silver Mane guards? Eh, I was just storing a few relics away from prying eyes. Nothing serious. If it weren't for the uncompromising nature of our civil service, <laughs> there'd be no need for secrecy. So where about you guys from, anyway? I don't mean to pry or anything. I just care about my friends. No pressure. Number seven, never leave a footprint. I have my own special technique called invisible snow walking. Helps me throw off pursuers in no, no time. Who are they? Uh, you remember the Silverman guards I mentioned? That's them. Help me, old friends. I don't want to be caught. It's the suspect and his accomplices. Arrest them. are made to be broken. Guards order you to relinquish your futile resistance. Ugh, that Sampo cheated us all. Time to keep Wait, vigilant. Get my hands on him. Suspect, relinquish your resistance. So I'm a criminal, huh? Ready for this, Sampo? Wait until I get my hands on you. Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. This ends here. Prime suspect? The one with the blue hair? Apologies, Captain. We lost him during the pursuit. We can't find his footprints. <sighs> no matter. We have his accomplices. He'll be close by, plotting his next move. Captain, not an adjudication panel. As a Bellabog citizen, you have the right to defend yourself, but that can only take place under the scrutiny of the architects, not now. Take them away. But we're not from Bellabog! Photos. Ah, oh, you're a genius! Great idea! You've probably never seen what your planet looks like, right? I took this one! Behold! Yarilo 6! <laughs> you mean to say that this... white ball... that's here? <laughs> that's our home? How can that... Hmm... <sighs> It is said that a long time ago, strange visitors from beyond the sky would visit us here. But that after the eternal freeze, the blizzards made passage impossible. And Bellabog would cease to witness such arrivals. But these people are... This decision is beyond us. If what they say is true, then only the Supreme Guardian may decide their fate. Our job is to present them before her. Nothing more. Outsiders, follow me. Bellabog lies beyond this blizzard.
Welcome to Bellabar, the city of preservation. Like it got a bit warmer. That's because you're in Bellabog, the last bastion of humanity. Last bastion? <laughs> 700 years ago, monsters from beyond the sky set the world ablaze. The land was turned to scorched earth, with raging infernos and billowing towers of smoke stretching beyond the horizon. In the midst of the conflict, the eternal freeze descended without warning. Suddenly, sweeping winds brought blizzards which buried the invading legion. Bellabog was all that remained. The steadfast architects built this city. Under the protection of Klepoth, the preservation, Bellabog remains forever warm in the face of unrelenting cold. He sure saying some weird stuff. Marked change in tone. Sounds like he's quoting from a historical record. Uh-huh. So why is he telling us all this? You wanted to know. Uh <laughs> We saw strange creatures outside the city. It must have come from a Terran corroded space. A fragmentum, correct? How do you... That's right. Out there in the blizzard, there are still many threats, including the monsters you saw. The Silver Main Guards are continuously engaged with the enemy, but I'm afraid the situation is bleak. After your meeting with the Supreme Guardian, I would like to consult you on this matter. We're... Lacking in intel. We're here. This is Klepoth Fort, the heart of Bellabog and headquarters of the Architects. The saviors of humanity. Long before the arrival of the Eternal Freeze, the Architects braved the doubts and derision of the people, never wavering from their construction of its defenses. History has proven that their decision was the correct one. The Architects named this fortress after Klepoth, Eon of Preservation. Under their direction, humanity has withstood external enemy attacks and held off the Eternal Freeze. Even today, we resist the Fragmentum's corrosion. This fortress is also the residence of the Supreme Guardian. The Supreme Guardian? The leader of Bellabog, elected and appointed by the Architects. The Supreme Guardians have watched over this city for generations, sheltering the people from harm. The current Guardian is Madame Kakolia Rand. Every major strategic decision is issued by her. Whoa, she sounds like a big deal. I will now bring you to see Madame Kakolia. Please, have your words at the ready. Her time is precious, so she prefers concise communication. Uh, we're gonna see her right now? Can I at least find a place to freshen up first? You've got some snow in your hair, but no one will notice. I've dispatched a messenger to send word. Adam Kakolia will be aware of your arrival. Come with me. But that's a meaningless sacrifice. How can you... <clears throat> you may leave, Branya. Visitors have arrived. Ugh. Yes, Mother.
Madam Guardian, I have brought three outsiders to see you. The messenger informed me. Well done, Jacquard. You may leave. Welcome, visitors from beyond the Eternal Freeze. Or perhaps I should say, from beyond the sky, no? <laughs> I am Kokolia Rand, Bellabog's Supreme Guardian. I would be grateful if you could tell me why you have come. Do you wish me to doubt it? Or perhaps you're not confident in that identity yourself? <laughs> no, I do not doubt it. I can see that you are not from this world. The architects remember the history well, else we should forget it. I know that in the distant past, before the Eternal Freeze descended or the Legion invaded, this world was once prosperous beyond measure. An eon connected our planet to other worlds, and we discovered the endless possibilities of the boundless universe. We also came to know of Klopoth, the Amber Lord. Under their attentive gaze, we built the city walls. So do not be surprised. For 700 years, the architects have received no further communication from the stars. But I knew of your existence. Tell me why you have come. We came here for something known as a Stellaron. A Stellaron? Objects that fell from the blue on separate worlds. Their appearance spelled disaster. Many of the planets we visited have suffered their effects. You mentioned invasion by the Antimatter Legion. Soon after their arrival, this planet suffered the Eternal Freeze. At the same time, the phenomenon known as Fragmentum Space Corrosion began to occur. Correct? Correct. Which is why the Antimatter Legion and Stellarons often show up together. Worlds seeded with Stellarons give birth to Fragmentums. As for the Eternal Freeze, it must have been a product of the Stellaron, unique to the environment of your world. You can see us as... kind-hearted, interstellar public servants, lending a helping hand to any world affected by a Stellaron. <clears throat> your analysis of our current circumstances is clear. We have indeed suffered the disasters you speak of some of which prove vexatious to us even today. But why should you care? Even if this Stellaron you speak of did bring about disaster, I fail to see its connection to you. I don't believe that anyone would go to such lengths to help a world unrelated to them. Unless they had something to gain. You're right. Our reason for coming here is not purely selfless. If we don't seal the Stellaron, we cannot leave this planet. Yeah, FYI, we're pretty awesome. You know how to seal the Stellaron. We have the relevant means. Very well, I believe you. If our present situation is truly the result of this so-called Stellaron, then your arrival is the hope that Bellabog has waited 700 years for. I am willing to assist you in any way possible to help you locate the Stellaron. It's getting late, and you must be tired. I will arrange for you to stay in our most comfortable hotel. Rest there and get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow at noon, I will dispatch someone to escort you here. And we can discuss this urgent matter in greater detail. It should be me thanking you, visitors from beyond the sky. I too need some time. I will go over our records for anything that may be connected to Stellarons. 
Please excuse me for not escorting you further. Of course, I understand. Do not worry. I have a way. It seems that the Supreme Guardian holds you in high regard. I have received orders that your movements are no longer to be restricted. She's the big shot! Definitely got that Queen of the Castle vibe going on! Oh, so cool! <laughs> I'm afraid I still have duties to attend to. I must return to my post. I hope you enjoy your stay in Bellabog. Uh, wait! Can you recommend some sites? It's not that late. We want to take a look around. Well, I'd say that Golden Theater and the History Museum are both worth a look. However, you'd need a pass to get into the museum. I recommend you visit Everwinter Monument first. It's Bellabog's most symbolic landmark. And if you enjoy music, you could head to Neverwinter Workshop. You can sometimes catch an outdoor performance there. The artist is... <sighs> You'll see. Oh, and if you're staying at Goethe Hotel, please avoid the alley that runs next to it. The one with Silvermane Guard stationed there. It's started to be affected by corrosion recently, so it's been sealed off. So the corrosion is inside the city. That's a grave situation. Yes, we're mounting a resistance as we speak. I must leave now. I hope all goes well for you. Wow, look at the carved ice. It feels perfect for this city somehow. Whatever it's made of, it can't be ice. I guess you're right. It's actually pretty warm in the city. Uh, hey, what's with all the children over there? Should we go and take a look? So let me introduce myself. I'm the intelligence officer for the Silvermane Guards, and a temporary guide for the A Journey Through Bellabog's History program. My name is Pelageya Sergeyevna, but you can call me Pela. Yes, Miss Pela. And perhaps the grown-ups among us could refrain from acting like children? Okay, guys. Take a look over here. This is Everwinter Monument. It was erected to commemorate the mighty architects. The architects are followers of the Eon Klopoth. It was they that foresaw a crisis, built up our walls, and established Bellabog, preserving the spark of human civilization. Even today, they are still tending to the city. Everwinter Monument is made up of two parts. A gear that symbolizes knowledge and industrial strength, and huge ice crystals that symbolize the eternal breeze. These two symbols are bound together, the gear restricting the ice. It represents the unyielding spirit of the architects in the face of nature's barbarity. Any questions? Any questions? Ugh, that's the alley that Jepard mentioned. The one contaminated by the Fragmentum, right? I can't believe how close it is to the city center. They hadn't identified it. I bet all the shops and hotels in the vicinity would have had to close down by now. Move back! This is your final warning! But... but my proof of property is inside. I don't have any... The Fragmentum has already corroded this block. You can make a property retrieval request to the Architects, but only Silvermane Guards are permitted to enter here. I can't believe Fragmentum corrosion has spread into the city. No wonder there are so many soldiers stationed there. No. As long as the Stellaron is active, the corrosion will continue to spread. 
The soldiers can only periodically clear the fragmentum of monsters. But the monsters will continue to emerge and multiply. Please try to understand, sir. Backwater Pass has become very dangerous. We're just here for your safety. If I can't get my proof of property, it doesn't matter how safe I am. Out of my way! Let me pass! <sighs> Workshop. Hey, didn't Japard say there'd be a show here? He said you can sometimes catch an outdoor performance. Sometimes being the operative word. Ah, oh, darn. I wanted to see one. Oh, I'd been wondering. You see that heater over there? Why do they keep it outdoors? This city is so weird. Normally you'd want a heater inside a building, right? If so, I'm not sure mighty is the right word for these architects. Tiny heaters are no use against the Stellaron disaster. <laughs> you guys sure have a lot to say about that broken heater. Oh wow, she's cool! Yep, touch it and find out. Ice cold. I was just about to fix it up. I forgot to introduce myself. The name's Serval. I'm the owner of this workshop. If you got any broken equipment lying around, you can always come find me. Though I can't guarantee I'll be interested in fixing it. Oh, uh, we're okay. I was just curious about the heater. Curious? About the heater? It's just a standard Geomero radiator. You can find them anywhere in the administrative district. Only just got here? Ah! I figured it out! I heard a loudmouth guard say that a group of outsiders had met with Cocolia. You must be them? What an honor! Where are my manners? We can talk about heaters all day if you like. Let's have a chat. The heater you saw is just a standard Geomero radiator. They may not look like much, but they're a real lifeline to the people. The blizzards here are brutal. If we didn't have a reliable way of keeping warm, Bellabog would long since have become a dead city, both above and below the surface. Isn't it just like cooking food over an open flame? If the house is a pot, then the heater is the stove it rests on. When she puts it like that, it actually starts to make sense. No sweat. This is your first time in Bellabog. I just want you to feel some of the warmth the city has to offer. Hey, seeing as there's nothing on your plate just now, want to help me fix up this machine? Just a bit of manual labor. You might find it interesting. Great. Then let me give you a demonstration first. Nice. You guys are pretty handy. You picked that up in no time. Want to be my assistants? Average pay, but I'm a good boss. <laughs> Do you just say yes to everything? <laughs> I was only kidding. Just a joke. Well, I'd better carry on here. Why not have a better look around? My workshop will always be open to you. And your wallets, of course. So tired. Uh, I just want to put my head on a pillow and drift off. Uh, seems like the first day of our trailblazing expeditions is always pretty eventful, huh, Don Hung? <laughs> it's because you've got too much energy. Wow, what a beautiful lobby! It's gonna be soft mattresses and cushiony pillows tonight! Wanna have a pillow fight later? Huh? Huh? 
I bet they're stuffed with goose feathers. <laughs> March. Earlier in Klepoth Fort. Stop, I know what you're gonna say. March, you said too much back there. March, you shouldn't reveal our goal to people we don't trust. Meanwhile, you guys were beating around the bush and speaking in riddles. But check it out. Seems like we landed with a pretty sweet deal, right? We get the royal treatment, rooms in a beautiful hotel, and the full support of the locals. As far as trailblazing goes, this is smooth as heck. That's... not what I was going to say. All right, spit it out then. Earlier in Klepoth Fort, uh, were you paying attention to the Supreme Guardian? Uh, yeah, of course. This isn't my first expedition, you know. My powers of perception are sharper than the sharpest blade. Something up with her. She seemed normal to me. She was kinda harsh at first, but she turned out to be a nice, reasonable lady. Although, it felt like she was looking through me. As in, I know she was speaking to us, but it seemed like her gaze was fixed on something far away. Hmm, I had a similar feeling. Almost as if we weren't the only people in the room. Do you have to put it like that? That's scary. Well, there's no way he'd get past Don Hung's sharp eyes. Perhaps I'm too sensitive. She did promise to help us. I just hope she keeps her word. Mm. Let's get some rest. We need to save our energy for the discussions tomorrow. Is there anything left to do? We're meeting the Guardian tomorrow. There won't be any time for sightseeing. It was a long day today. All I need is a hot shower and a good night's sleep. Oh, you too. Let's get to bed early and save our energy. I sense the next few days could be tiring. Well, I'm off to my room then. Express lights off! Who are you? What are you? Did you hear that? There's a group of Silvermane guards at the entrance, and I don't think they're here to say hi. Uh, if this is our escort, it's less friendly than I was expecting. Guess we'll have to find out. Let's go and meet them. We won't know until we're down there. Hey, Commander Branya is waiting for you all down below. Hurry up and go see her. And no tricks. Are we in a lot of trouble? Branya Rand, acting commander of the Silvermane Guards. In the name of the Amber Lord and the Highest, and under order of Supreme Guardian Kokolia Rand, 
I hereby arrest the suspected infiltrators under the charge of plotting to incite rebellion. As agent of the Supreme Guardian, I herewith temporarily strip you of your freedom of action and speech. When you are tried by the adjudication panel, you will be given the opportunity to defend yourselves against the accusations. Resistance will prove futile. You must come with me. Uh, wait a minute! This isn't what we agreed! She said we were gonna be escorted to discuss an urgent matter! This is an orchestrated betrayal, obviously. Looks like we've been downgraded to accomplices. Again. It seems like it's every third planet this happens. That's because you always act without thinking. You never have a plan. Hey, I'm improving. I'm uh, coming up with a plan right now. And... Got one! Donung, the alley. The one that's been sealed off. Hmm, it's possible. March. Be ready to make an escape. Huh? Really? I just wanted to say something. Three of a kind? Shh! It's an old Astral Express escape signal. Do you play cards? Two pair? Hey, what are you whispering? Let's get going. Ace! <laughs> 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 Momentum. I don't know if they're overconfident or just eager for death. It would seem that Mother's judgment was correct. Should we report them as missing or deceased? <sighs> the Supreme Guardian's order was to arrest them. We cannot abandon our pursuit just because they fled into a sealed off area. I must ascertain their fate with my own eyes. Yes, ma'am. Eradicate all threats to Bellabox security. That is what I must do. surprise. Nothing more. They'll be in pursuit soon enough. Hmm. <laughs> Let's follow the path. We need to guarantee our own safety before making any further plans. So, what happened back there? Why did the Supreme Guardian send people to arrest us? Imagine launching a surprise attack when your enemy is fast asleep. Uh, the cheek! That woman had a troubling aura. Our instincts were correct. Oh, shiny! Wait, Ooh, there are silver main guards here. Careful not to alert them. They must have entered from another direction to cut us off. We should avoid an open conflict. Let's find another path. It doesn't seem like there's any way to open this gate. Ooh, check this mechanism out! Look familiar? Yes. We saw one in Serval's workshop. We need to solve it before we run out of time. The guards are right on our heels. I don't see a switch for the gate. Ah, uh, over there! There's a monster in the area. We'll need to deal with it first. Ambush. 
You dare underestimate me. <laughs> Even though it has suffered fragmentum corrosion, this is still part of Bellabog. It was our home. The guards know this place like the back of their hand. Enough, cat and mouse. Drop your weapons and come with me. Ah, oh, you're such a nuisance! Just what crime are we supposed to have committed again? It better be worth you following us all the way out here! My orders are to arrest you. It is for the adjudication panel to present you with the nature and penalty of your alleged crimes. You saw us yesterday. Do you remember? Madame Cocolia received us as honored guests. How can such a drastic change have occurred in the course of one night? The Madame Guardian investigated your backgrounds. She summoned me last night to tell me that you had deceived her. Your identities and purpose here are counterfeit. You seek to overthrow the rule of the Architects. Huh, what a two-faced hag! Publicly insulting the Supreme Guardian only elevates the seriousness of your crimes. Throw down your arms and surrender! We're wasting our words, March. At least one thing is clear. We mustn't be caught. Oh, well, if there's no escape, then maybe it's time we gave them a taste of Astral Express medicine! Bronya. Hmm. I'll handle these evil doers myself. This girl's pretty strong. Hey, Don Hung! Maybe now's a good time to show off your secret strength? <sighs> you first. Uh, you're no fun. Intruders, give it up. You will be guaranteed a fair trial. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to ruin the intensity of the moment. Sacrifice and die because of my order. What about the underworlders? They will lose the protection of the architects. They will see me as a tyrant. Understand. Come on, those toys of yours aren't that dangerous. Uh, then why hasn't she woken up yet? Because she's sound asleep. <laughs> Didn't you hear her sleep talking? Ah, oh, poor child. Sounded like a bad nightmare. Tell me the truth, Sampo. What are you gonna do about the overworld girl? What am I gonna do about her? Why, wait for the opportunity and send her back, together with the rest of them, of course. I... Hey, come on, what's with the... You're a bad liar, Sampo Koski. What? I didn't mean to bring her along. The smoke was too dense. I was in a daze. Before I knew it, I'd somehow dragged her down here, too. What are you up to, Sampo? Why do you insist on getting caught up in overworld affairs that have nothing to do with you? 
If it's a whole lot more attention from wildfire you want, you're going about it the right way. Hey now, Sampo Koski's primary concern is taking care of his friends. These guys scratch my back? How could I live with myself if I didn't scratch theirs? And another thing, where does wildfire get off assuming that these fine folks won't come in useful to them, huh? I mean, you never know. Which is why you've set them loose in the underground? Come on, accidents happen. I'll have them rounded up in no time. <sighs> that girl... Get her back as soon as possible, then don't let her out of your sight. The underground has been sealed off for over ten years now. Uh, the children won't even remember what overgrounders look like. If a girl in a silver main guard uniform suddenly shows up, what would Wildfire do with her? What would they do with you? All right, I get it. I'm setting off right now. I'll have to trouble you to look after them while I'm gone, ma'am. Hey, sleepyhead. Looks like you're awake. How are you feeling? Any aches or pains? Good. You were out for a while. I was beginning to worry. You were saying some strange things. Well, now that you're awake, you should probably try moving your limbs. I'm Natasha, a doctor in the underground. You've already spent a day in my clinic. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> you're very polite. Sampo's gone to clear up a mess of his own making. So I'm looking after you in the meantime. Based on your current state, I don't think there's any cause for alarm. You seem perfectly healthy. So if you don't mind, I'll go and take a look at the other patients. Sampo just told me that you lost consciousness. He didn't say why. Still, I'll wager it had something to do with him. He's always tinkering with his devices. Anyway, the opinion of the clinic is that none of you have come to harm. Oh, please, you needn't worry. You've just been asleep for a while. I barely had to lift a finger. I might have exaggerated your condition for Sampo's years, but that guy owes me. You better bring me back some medicine. Sampo told me. Don't worry, the Silvermain guards won't follow you below ground. We've been cut off from the surface for many years. <laughs> Even when things were at their worst down here, they never showed. Of course, I don't know the whole story behind why the Architects ordered the lockdown. Who knows? Thanks to you, they might finally be about to lift it. Something that Wildfire's wanted to achieve for a long time now. They've been up for a while already. The young guy with the dark hair left first. He went with Sampo. Your rowdier friend took off soon after waking up. I imagine she's taking a stroll nearby. As for the girl in the Silvermane guard uniform, I told Sampo to watch her, but it seems that he left his post and she made a run for it. Good question. <laughs> He's a... Man of mystery. He claims to be a simple cross-border businessman. Not that there's much to interest an overworlder down here. Either way, he's got a surprising number of connections. I've managed to secure more than a few urgent medical supplies through him, and he's been a big help to Wildfire. In any case, I don't think his intentions are sinister. It's a grassroots organization. Think of it as the Silvermane Guards of the Underground, but less stone-hearted. <laughs> no need to thank me. It's a doctor's duty to heal. 
gotta find March 7th and Dan Hung. But where should I start? that if I win hide and seek, you'll tell Big Sister March all the ins and outs. Yep, all the ins and outs. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it just means you'll tell me all the details. No hiding anything and no telling fibs. <laughs> Hook isn't an overgrounder, you know. Hook never tells fibs. Yeah, never. Well, that's settled then. Okay, let's play. Huh? You! Uh, when did you get here? Uh, th this isn't just hide and seek, okay? Let me explain. It's like this. After I woke up, that doctor said Sambo had taken Don Hong with him. I went around in circles trying to find the blue-haired scoundrel and bumped into these kids. They say they know where he is. But they said I had to join the moles or something if I wanted to find out. And to do that, I had to prove my strength by winning a game of hide-and-seek. Do you get it? What if I am? Why don't you help me, huh? Hey, are you done with your secret talk? The most time is precious. Yeah, precious. Okay, okay, we're done. Pitch Dark Hook the Great. This is my friend. She also wants to join the moles. Can she play too? Um, phew, I guess so. Then. You guys are seeking! Boss, they don't seem very smart. Why don't we do a practice one first? Hmm, you're right, Julian. Okay, let's do a practice one. I'll hide. You two have to find me. So, you kids think you're better than us, huh? Just you wait and see. It's simple. When you see one of them, you just have to catch them. Gotcha! So what? It's just a practice. Wait until we're playing for real. You'll see. <laughs> Bring it on. All right. Now we're playing for real. You gotta count to 50 before you open your eyes. No cheating. 47, 48, 49, 50. <laughs> Ready or not, here I come, naughty children. Haven't lost the game for ages. <laughs> You're doomed. Got it yet? We're the underground's greatest hiders and seekers. Hmm, something's not right. That guy's been staring at us this whole time. Hide and seek might have to wait. Let's see what he wants. are telling me something's not right with this guy, but... That's because I'm tall and old. I'm a grown man. Ask anyone. All right, the jig is up. Your voice gave it away. <laughs> Julian of a thousand faces. 
Why did you have to talk to me? My reputation is ruined. What will the boss think? No need for the melodrama. That was still a magical performance. Don't run. I got not fair. I'm the boss of the moon. How can I lose to a bunch of villains? Do your worst. I'm not afraid. What are they feeding you kids down here? Hey, where are you going? Come back, come back. They won't be hiding that far away. Haha, -ha, I caught you. Hm. Doesn't count unless you can answer this question. What? But we caught you. What's with the Q&A? Huh. I thought I had you there. I... <sighs> I'm sorry, boss. I failed. Darn! How did you see through Julian's disguise? What villainy is this? <laughs> Those with keen eyes see the dust between the stars. I came up with that, by the way. About time I got some credit for it. So, Pitch Dark Hook the Great. You can tell us now, right? Uh, yes. The boss of the moles is true to her word. Hook saw the blue-haired guy take your dark-haired friend to the fight club. The fight club? You don't talk about it. Is this more secret talk? Uh, Pitch Dark Hook the Great. Where is the Fight Club? Can you show us the way? Hmm... But... It's an obvious building. Grown-ups are just useless. Come with Hook, I'll take you over. Thanks, oh Great One. That's Pitch Dark Hook the Great to you! Who said you could shorten my title? A club just for fighting. Who knew undergrounders had such brutal hobbies? Uh -huh. In fact, it's awesome! They let you take part? When did this place last have an inspection? Loads of kids take part. Ah, despicable. My... We're here! This is it. Uh, Hook's gonna go fight. See you later! Who's in charge here? How can they just let kids attack each other? The moles are in charge, that too. Uh, but only the kids. Wildfire's in charge of grown-up business. Um, the moles control everything underground. Ooh, they need one more player there. I, I gotta go. If you ever want to fight, come find me. tingling, earth-shattering contest! On one side, recommended by tall, blue, and handsome, the unsmiling, pulverizing power of the new kid on the block, Cold Dragon Young! And his opponent is none other than the unfeeling, incendiary, explosive might of Team Robobat! All praise to Boss Farad! Given that no other fighter was willing to take on the strength of Team Robomatic, Cold Dragon Young will face off against these opponents alone! On learning his fate, the brave young fighter had one thing to say WHATEVER! And so, let the semifinals of the 1758th Fighting King Challenge begin! Quick, let's help him! Oh, brothers and sisters, an unexpected turn of events. Two members of the audience have charged into the octagon. It looks like they want to team up with Cold Dragon Young. <sighs> so you're awake. Yeah, the first thing we did was go look for you. And now that we found 
You were trying to make sure you don't get your butt kicked. You're welcome. Brothers and sisters, you can feel their passion. The magnetic pull of this electric sport is undeniable. But let me reiterate, these competitions are for professionals only. Whatever you do, kids, don't try this at home. And Cold Dragon Young is signaling that the contest will go ahead. He's just itching to get into it. And so are we. It's the Iron Fists of Cold Dragon Young and friends versus the Iron Skin of Team Robomatic. I can take them on my own, you know. Oh, we need to work on your emotional intelligence. Get after him. That guy can't have gotten too far. Let's search nearby. Hey, hey, it's you! I was just thinking to myself, am I getting robbed? Who are these people following me? So, you know, you start to walk a little faster. And anywho, if I just turned around, I could have thrown open my arms and said a big hi to my old friends. David, you saw us in there and got scared, so you pulled a runner. Me? Scared? Oh, my friends, what do I have to fear? Surely I haven't done anything to offend you. My fine fellow, please don't do that again. You scared the daylights out of me. Wait a minute, we're not done here. You dragged us to the underground. I have no choice but to take you guys down here. It was too dangerous for us on the surface. We're wanted criminals. Sure, the underworld has its drawbacks, but at least the guards would never follow us. We're safe here. Be that as it may, did you really have to poison us? Maybe you've forgotten, but we were in a tight spot, my friend. There was no time to think. I had to use whatever I could. So, it wasn't to cover anything up? A secret that you didn't want anyone, including us, to find out? <laughs> it's true. Don Hung, what secret? Well, I'm not certain yet. But there's more to our friend here than meets the eye. You win! I'll help you to the best of my ability, free of charge, I might add. But. Please, don't go spreading rumors about me. <sighs> All right, to prove my sincerity, I'll introduce you to Wildfire. If you're looking for something down here, they're the ones to ask. Because you're looking for something? Why are you asking? Dan Hung told me you guys were searching for a... What's it? Stellaron. Sounded pretty powerful. If anyone has a clue on its whereabouts, it'll be Wildfire. You said I'd uncover a clue if I became the Fight Club champion. Uh, uh yeah. I mean, if you fought in the final round and won, you'd have incredible street cred right now. Wildfire wouldn't think twice about talking with you. I don't see the problem. Well, there's no such thing as a free lunch, of course. Wildfire has no reason to help you yet, so we'll just have to give them one. With your talents, we have nothing to worry about. I'm telling you, no matter where you go, there's only one rule to getting things done. Find the demand. 
You know, like supply and demand. Anyway, the underground has been sealed off for more than a decade. But do you think people here are just resigned to their fate? Well, if you want my opinion, they're a bunch of artless, stubborn fools. But who cares what I think, huh? They're a band of do-gooders who sprung up to maintain order in the underground after the Silvermane guards withdrew, Wildfire set up shop. Still, don't underestimate them. We walk in the presence of giants. Have you heard that saying before? Well, Wildfire has giants in its midst. You'll see. Have a little faith. It's like I said, Sampo never lets friends who've helped him come do hard. <laughs> so, what does Wildfire do all day? Why, everything. They keep the peace, uphold justice, fight for resources, distribute goods. The sliver of trust they have for me has to do with the last one. Huh, where's Joshua? What are those shiny rocks? Ah, this is Geomero, an exothermic ore. The underground and the surface are sealed off from one another, right? Well, only the Geomero transport line is still running. The underground sends ore to the surface, and the surface sends goods to the underground. At least in theory. Most undergrounders are miners, and this is what they mine for a living. You know, if we didn't have Geomero to burn, this world would have frozen to death long ago. All right, let's keep moving. Person I was looking for isn't here. Oh, old Oleg isn't here either? Where is everyone? <laughs> so you're leading us on another wild goose chase? I wouldn't dare. Trust me, we're getting close. <sighs> huh? What's that huge structure in the distance? Oh, that's the furnace core. It's the pillar that connects the underworld and the overworld. People used to travel up and down that thing, but then... Then what? It's a long story. In any case, practically nothing moves up or down anymore. Except you. Oh, come on, my dear fellow. I thought we weren't going to discuss this. I beg you, the fewer rumors there are about me, the better. Zila is usually always out on patrol here at this time. What's Wildfire up to? Hmm. Hey, look! Who is that? It looks like she's in trouble. Uh, my friends, don't just stand there. This drama doesn't need any more bystanders. Oh? You know, it might be interesting to see you get in trouble. We should avoid attracting too much attention. But we can't just leave her. The young lady is wise and righteous. Let's help her. My princess, let's dispense with the pleasantries. You dare attack someone on our turf? Well, how about a few rounds with me? Miss Zila, phew, it's a good thing you showed up when you did. My heartfelt thanks. These vagrants have got some nerve looking for trouble in wildfire terror. <sighs> Shut it, Sampo. This is you written all over it. Wildfire has countless issues on its plate right now. We don't need a side order of Koski. 
I hear Silvermane Guard is paying the Underworld a visit. Is that you? You kidnapped me and brought me to the Underground. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> Listen to her. What is the meaning of this? She still thinks she's an overworld princess. Do you know what's become of us down here while you live the easy life? Did you even consider the fate of the Underworlders? The Silvermane Guards aren't living the easy life. We are constantly engaged with the enemy, defending Bellabog from the scourge of attacking monsters and protecting all those above and below the surface. <laughs> Do you even hear yourself? You protect the underground? Redeploying every guard to the surface? Sealing off the only passageway? Protecting the so-called architects, more like it. The Madam Guardian has her reasons. <laughs> Enough talk. You're coming with me. Chief Oleg wants to see you, and he's got more than a few questions. Perfect, Miss Hila. We were just on our way to pay Chief Oleg a visit ourselves. Room for a few more? Fully booked. Who are they? You know the chief? Then why don't I know you? Well, it's like this. The chief's in the market for specific talent. An urgent request, so I'm taking them to see him. We're looking for a Stellaron. It's the source of all the disasters here. If we find it, we can... <laughs> I would recommend you not recite your story to everyone you meet. Miss Hila won't understand it anyway, so... Let's save it for the chief, huh? You're right. I don't understand it. And I don't plan on passing the message on either. Wildfires encountered trouble at the Great Mine. The chief's busy. If you really want to find him, come look for me at the mine entrance. I'm leaving. Hey, you came. That was fast. Didn't I tell you? Long story short, the underground used to have many mines. However, in recent years, some sort of corrosion called the Fragmentum started to spread. It's ruined a lot of mines. The one we're heading into is relatively unaffected. A bunch of vagrants made it their home after their old turf was consumed by the Fragmentum. Actually, most of them are pretty honest folks. But with such a large group, it's inevitable that troublemakers will find their way in. They've been stealing stuff from the miners and picking fights. And that's not the worst of it. Things are much more serious this time. For two days now, huge clashes have been breaking out between the miners and the vagrants. It isn't pretty. Mines are our lifelines in the underworld. We have to keep providing Geomero to the Overworld in exchange for supplies. In order to quell the situation, Chief Oleg brought Wildfire into the mine and left me in charge of security for the towns. But the situation in the mine is critical. I have to back him up. Oh, as for you, the Chief will decide your fate when we see him. Good. I've been wanting to come face to face with the leader of the Underworld. You're about to come face to face with reality. Uh huh? Isn't that the doctor lady? What's Natasha doing here? Things must be worse than I thought. Hey! Where are you going? Don't think you can just run off. Come back here and finish talking things through with Natasha. Nat, I didn't think you'd be here. Where's Oleg? Hey, Zila and Sampo's guests. So it looks like you've already met. I haven't seen Oleg. The miners said they saw him take a group further in. Miners and their family members. 
they want an explanation from the instigators. This area up ahead is a vagrant dwelling, but they've sealed off the entrance. I guess they're afraid that angry miners might try to take revenge. <sighs> I heard that many were injured in the clashes, so I hurried over here to see if I could help. How could this situation here become such a mess? I heard that first mining team found a geomarrow vein with incredible deposits. <laughs> the initial estimate put it at the largest discovery in the last 30 years. Are you serious? That's big news. How come I never heard about it? Well, they weren't in a hurry to make it known. <laughs> Most of the mines have been contaminated by the Fragmentum. Many people are out of work. They were afraid of being overwhelmed if they let the word out. But the vagrants here have keen eyes. They couldn't keep it hidden from them. Some local gangs wanted to profit from the situation, so they blackmailed the mining team for hush money. And that was the final straw. <sighs> I can understand your thinking. It's just that the underground is in difficult straits. And that's how the clash started. Now both sides are dealing with heavy losses. So, are you guys here to help resolve the conflict? They're here because they need a favor from Chief Oleg. I'm escorting them. And seeing as you need that helping hand, it wouldn't be too much to ask you to lend one here first, right? Of course we want to help. We care about other people too, you know. Oh, that's quite nice of you. <laughs> I believe we're dealing with kind-hearted people here, Zila. As you've all seen, the situation down here is, um, strained. If you can, we would really appreciate you helping the people. The giant ore vein, the one they discovered. That must be where the clashes are centered. Come on, let's get to higher ground and take a look. That person up ahead, is he asleep? Let's head up and take a look. He might need help. Falling asleep in a place like this, impressive. Hey, wakey, wakey. You'll get mushrooms growing on your head! Hmm. What? Mushroom bread? I can't see it on the menu. Huh? Mesila! Have you got a death wish or something? How can you sleep here? Get back to safety and take shelter! Take shelter? I remember now! These guys came out of nowhere and got into a fight with the mining team. At the time, I was exhausted. I'd hardly run a few feet when one of them caught me. If it weren't for wildfire, they'd have stolen the clothes off my back. You don't know these guys. No moral compass. They'd rob you blind in a flash. It's only thanks to wildfire that the great mine hasn't fallen under their control completely. Uh, speaking of which... Where is Wildfire? Did they head further in? Is there a fight happening? It seems like Chief Oleg must be up ahead. Hurry up and get back to safety. Look for Nat. And try not to get into another scrap along the way. Okay. Thank you for, um, getting me on my feet. If I get back soon enough, I'll have time for a, for a nap. that woman. That's Elaine from First Mining Team. Elaine, are you okay? Are you hurt? Uh, Zila, thank goodness. I I'm fine. Just a couple of sprains. <sighs> You've got good timing. Those vagrants were asking me about the robots, but I don't know anything. Oh, don't you know? 
The intersection of the Great Mine has been seized by a band of robots. Neither the mining team nor the vagrants can get anywhere near. New challengers enter! About time! Human-only conflicts are so boring! Does anyone know where the robots come from? <sighs> At first, we thought that a collective fault had occurred in the excavation machines, but then we found out that those machines didn't even belong to the mining team. They came out of nowhere and pushed the vagrants and us back. Then they blocked off the only tunnels into the intersection. <sighs> There's no way anyone in the mining team is behind this. Operating a single unit is tiring enough, but a whole group? <laughs> Impossible. Then there's only one possibility. Boss Svarog. Svarog? That name sounds familiar. <sighs> you remember the robots we defeated in the boxing gym? Oh, Boss Svarog's robots! What's his deal? Let's just say... He's not to be trifled with. Let's go and find some other people. Elaine, can you make it back to safety? No problem. Zila and the rest of you, be careful. Robots aligned against humans? I've never heard of such a thing. Machines should open. Is this elevator broken? Why isn't it re responding? Why are you worried about this piece of junk? Do you really want to go down there and be a live target for the robots? But if we evacuate, then haven't we lost out? <sighs> you idiot, we'll just steal off the miners. Look, I saw with my own eyes. They managed to bag some Geomara. This is a perfect opportunity. Oh, good idea. Shameless. Still after the miners, are you? Time to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Fleeing at the first sign of danger. That's all they're good for. Huh? What's this? Did those guys leave it behind? Whoa! whoa. What the heck? Beep, beep, beep! Searching for potential user. Beep, beep, beep! Voice print detected! Looking up corresponding identity information. Oh my, it's an alien! Hey, it talks! And it knows that we aren't from this planet? It doesn't seem to be technology from here. Look, it even has an International Peace Corporation logo on it. Perhaps it's an antiquity left behind by some past interstellar traveler. Beep, beep, beep. Your mom's an antiquity. Beep, beep, beep! Whatever, whatever. So you aliens know about the Inter-Astral Peace Corporation? That's great! Beep, beep, beep! Self-introduction. I am Richard, the Home Use Object Finder. Model information. Version 0 0.63. Professional model. Annual deluxe package. Nickname, Findy. A Home Use Object Finder? Who knew the IPC made these kinds of products? Beep, beep, beep. My brainwave scanner module is damaged. Please send me to an inter-astral peace appliances retail store near you for free repair within the warranty period of 232 years and 84 days. Beep, beep, beep. Alien, please take me to an inter-astral peace appliances retail store to conduct repairs. What? This spell is already broken. What should we do? Take it with us? Beep, beep, beep! Yes, yes, yes! When you need to find something you can't see, just call upon Findy! That's me! <sighs> hey, what's that commotion? It sounds like there's a big argument happening. Let's get closer and take a look. Cowards and bullies. I don't remember you guys acting this tough around Svarog's minions. <laughs> Did your parents never teach you what a backbone was? <laughs> we ain't stupid. Why would we risk our lives against the robots? And get off the high road. 
You can't just find a huge chunk of Geo Marrow and hog it all to yourselves. This mine is our territory. The mining team is laboring here day in and day out. You guys don't even pretend like you're here to lend a hand. You're lazy. All you want is to profit off our sweat and tears. And you don't even try hiding it. <laughs> Disgraceful. Where does disgrace come into it when we can't even fill our stomachs, huh? I know your game. You're just waiting for us to starve to death so there's more food for your mining team. <sighs> it's a waste of time trying to reason with you. While you've been kicking up this fuss, the whole vein's been seized by robots. Now we're all in the same boat. <laughs> right, right. We can't rely on the vein anymore. But don't forget which side brought loaded guns to the party. Whoa, easy. What are you trying to pull off? I'm warning you, wildfire are in the area. <laughs> Empty threat. <laughs> wildfire are stuck dealing with Sparog's minions. How are they gonna help you now? Unless you're planning on taking a bullet. Hand over the supplies and equipment. They're getting ready to attack. Those miners are unarmed. You shameless scoundrels! No need to play the hero. I'm going with you. I'm going too. We can't let these thugs get away with whatever they like. know whose territory this is? Yet? Shut it. This isn't your territory. <laughs> I'm in a hurry. I'll take Pretty you all in today. one go. Keep up. Oh, Zila, thank goodness you came. We were nearly, uh... <laughs> Nothing but a few knuckleheads. I'm just glad you're okay. Antonia, have you seen Chief Oleg? Oleg? He took a group into the intersection, said it was to clear off the invading robots. They've been gone for a while now. <laughs> if Wildfire was around, those thugs wouldn't have dared. Seems like the core of this problem is Svarog's robots. The boss. He appeared suddenly after the guards were redeployed and became a major player in the underworld. Svarog claims to be a guardian of humanity, all the ownerless robots obey his commands. They've occupied the Furnace Core hub, and they're not letting anyone get close. Nobody knows why Svarog did any of this. He usually doesn't leave the Furnace Core and interfere unless some kind of disorder breaks out in the underworld. Guardian of humanity? That can command robots? I I've never heard of anything like. Hmm. Looks like your mighty architects weren't as all knowing as you thought. Can you two say anything without quarreling? This isn't the time! <sighs> it sounds like there's danger waiting for us in the intersection. Can we still get through? Right. There's unfinished business here. The chief is still down there. It's only a bunch of scrap metal. What are we afraid of? Oh, is Zila starting to appreciate our strength? Hmm? I'll be honest. You guys are hardworking. If everyone from Wildfire were as impressive as you on the battlefield, we wouldn't be so hard-pressed by Svarog. Antonia. Can you take the mining team back through the entrance to meet up with Natasha? Yeah, sure thing. But uh, be careful. There are a lot of robots up ahead. Is this the right way? It looks like there's a roadblock up ahead. I'll be the judge of that. Come on, let's take a closer look. It's completely blocked by the mine card. What do we do? Can we blow it up? Easy. It belongs to the mining team. We can't just destroy it. We should try and fix it. Easier said than done. Do you know how? 
Yeah, of course. Every underworlder worth their salt knows how to fix a minecart. Let me see. Hmm. Even the pen connecting the body to the chassis is broken. Not to mention the rear wheel set bearing. This looks like the work of Svarog's minions. We need to find spare parts we can use nearby. We're wasting time. Beep, beep, beep. Friends, do you need to find something? Findy can help? How come you just jumped out on your own, little fella? Isn't your module thingy broken? Beep, beep, beep. My brainwave scanner module is indeed broken. However, manual input for search is still operable. Come on. Input the name of the object you were looking for. Findy can help. Oh, well, aren't you confident? Well, let me give it a try, then. Where's the input interface? Ah, found it. Minecart pin, minecart wheel set. Confirm. Just like that? Beep, beep, beep. Request is being processed. Beep, beep, beep. Match successful. Initiating search for lost item, minecart pin. Beep, beep, beep! Item found. Please commence search according to the Home Use Object Finder Safety Manual. Search history, I recommend the humanoid tactical microwave. Press skip to cancel personalized ads. Beep, beep, beep. Based on your search history, I recommend the humanoid tactical microwave. Press skip to cancel personalized ads. The current search has. Let me see. Uh, yeah, we can make do with this part. This little machine isn't half bad. Beep, beep, beep. What's that? Is that a hint of respect for Findy? How convenient! So, next time Don Hum gets lost, we can just use Findy to find him, right? Beep, beep, beep. Biological life form search is currently not supported. If you have any questions, please call Interastral Peace Appliances. Well, it was a good idea. Let's look for the next part. Initiating search for lost item, minecart wheel set. Beep, beep, beep! Item found! Please commence search according to the Home Use Object Finder Safety Manual. That's everything! You were a big help, Findy! Beep, beep, beep! It was nothing! Enter Astral Peace Appliances, your most trustworthy companion. Beep, beep, beep. Current search complete. Ah! Entering sleep mode. Please recharge the home use object finder. We're pretty lucky, huh? Without Findy, it probably would have taken half the day to find these parts. Well, not that long, but that little machine definitely made it a lot easier. All right, let's go back and fix the minecart. Are you going to do it yourself? Why wouldn't I? You've got to be self-reliant down here. Watch, you might learn something. All right, mission accomplished. <laughs> Quick work. You know, I didn't think you guys had worked a day in your lives, but you know how to get your hands dirty. The cart is about to depart! The robots will have seized the road ahead by now. We should go carefully. Whoa! Stop! Uh, stop, stop, stop! There's a big evil hunk of metal right there! That model... One of Svarog's lapdogs, all right. Don't be afraid. I've dealt with those robots before. Let's go. Wow. Oh, look at that. See? 
Seeing it up close, this vein's even more spectacular. I doubt the underground will ever see it fully excavated. This vein? So this is what everyone is fighting over. Mr. Sparrow, it's such a massive vein. I've never seen so much geomero before. Calculating. Based on the average rate of excavation, this vein is enough to supply Bellabog with 231 days of energy, with a margin of error of 7 days. I sense that your reason for summoning me is not the or in question. State your true intention, Clara. Right. I wanted Mr. Sparg to see that many miners and vagrants have gotten hurt because of the vein. Can you help them? I have already prevented the dispute and taken temporary control of the excavation zone. Evaluation result. In the event of no further variables, there will be no large-scale armed conflict within the next 30 days. I know why you did it, Mr. Sparog. It's just... I don't think it'll be enough. The mining team and Wildfire... They don't understand your actions. If only we could do more for them. My mission is the protection of the underworld. The trust of the minority sample is redundant to my calculations. Human behavior will always deviate from rational calculation, Clara. As evidenced by their presence here. Svarag! We haven't settled our final score. Zila. Subordinate to wildfire. Your resistance is futile. The result of my calculation is unequivocal. Remaining in the underworld is the optimal strategy for survival. This again. Calculation results, survival strategies. I haven't got time for your thesis. Withdraw your forces, or I'll lose my temper. Observe, Clara. Even under abject conditions, humans are unable to avoid division and conflict. But Mr. Sparog... Human failure to accept the calculation result is a significant threat to the survival strategy of the underworld. Calculation complete. Result unequivocal. Armed suppression of wildfire and their allies is the optimal course of action. Fashionably dressed, too. Hey, is he about to leave? What about the girl in red? We must leave, Clara. External variables have triggered a calculation reset. The furnace core hub requires protection. Please, Mills. Don't hit them too hard. <sighs> I was getting bored of those minions. Time for a real fight. Come at me! Phew. Not bad. How many of these big guys is Sparog hiding? A lot, which is why Wildfire has never been able to take him down. Svarog's forces are too strong. We don't have enough firepower. Clara? Don't worry about her. That girl is best pals with Svarog. She's always following behind him. He wouldn't harm her. I guess I'm just used to seeing them together now, even if I don't understand it. Let's look for the chief. No need to look far. Nice work, Zila. We were attacked on both sides by robots. Who knows where they came from? We thought we were in it for the long haul. <laughs> oh, chief, is everyone okay? Is anyone injured? We're fine. We're used to it at this point. We sent those pesky robots and ragtag troops packing. The mine should be quiet for a while. And, uh, who are your friends here? Ah, them. They're outsiders that Sample brought down from who knows where. They need a favor from Wildfire, so I brought them with me. It'll be faster if they explain.
<laughs> That's quite the tone to take on our first meeting. I won't forget you in a hurry. So, you went to all this trouble to find wildfire. What help is it you need? know you'd put on a show for the overworld, too. Impressive. <laughs> well, this is new. Wildfire can barely take care of the underworld. And now outsiders are looking for assistance from us. This Stellaron you speak of. I've never heard of it. But if it's a secret that even we locals don't know about, then one name does come to mind. The current Supreme Guardian is a liar, who uses sweet words to deceive the Underworld. She's never cared about our survival. Stop right there. I won't allow you to insult the Madam Guardian. Miss Overworld, my words may be painful to you, but every one of them is true. Go out into the towns and hear for yourself. See how the people here suffer. I haven't gotten close to voicing the extent of the Underworld's grievances, young lady. But I will respect your request. I will leave it at that for now. Let's get back to the main topic. The name that came to my mind was Svarov. Huh? Isn't Svarov Wildfire's sworn enemy? Why would a mere robot in the Underworld have knowledge of important secrets? Sworn enemy. Not how I see it. The young master here is closer. Svarog is a cold, unfeeling machine. He recognizes only the dead reasoning of his calculations. Svarog is not against wildfire. Or perhaps I should say, wildfire isn't even of concern to him. That ancient robot witnessed the war. If you're looking to pick up a thread, he may well be your best source. hearing this world was invaded by the Legion hundreds of years ago. Robots don't forget. If Svarog hasn't heard of your Stellaron, then I'm afraid perhaps no one has. In which case, we need to think of a way to convince Svarog to communicate with us. Or get him to hand over his memory bank. We could go through it ourselves. <sighs> what should we do? We've tried repeatedly to negotiate with Svarog, but he rejects every effort. He believes that wildfire is a threat. Still, if it were you guys... Hmm. It's difficult to say. We have time. Let's get into the details tomorrow. It's late, and you must have been through a lot. Go back to the town and rest. I'll make arrangements. Again? I'm starting to get nervous of arranged rest on this planet. As for our silver main girl here, do you have time? I'd like to talk with you in private. You guys have some moves. If you need my help with anything, just shout. <laughs> It'll take more than that. But, you're not as bad as I took you for. You walk the talk. Oh, uh, I wanted to ask you. That Branya girl, is she really a Silvermane guard? Oh, she heads up the force? <laughs> not bad. It's just, I thought that Silvermane guards were all cold and unfeeling. They left the underworld to perish. But she doesn't give me that impression. Anyway, I've got stuff to report to the chief. See you around. Hey, young lady, this isn't the best place for a chat. Let's keep things brief. Well, I heard that she's a Silvermane guard. I was sent to arrest you. 
I expected you to be less friendly around each other. Are you worried about her? Oh, we're working together. Understood. Rest easy. I won't make things difficult for her. We haven't seen a silver main guard down here for a long time now. I just want to ask her a few questions. Nothing more. Svarog? Well, he's an artificially intelligent being from the old world. He was here when the underground was first constructed. That's about all I knew. Now he guards the Furnace Core hub. Many vagrants have established bases in the vicinity, seeking Svarok's protection. You got the gist from Natasha, right? The miners and vagrants came to blows over the vein. Then Svarok's subordinates pushed everyone back. Well, perhaps their methods were lacking in finesse. But that's essentially what they did. If you want my take, he prevented another underworld conflict. Even if the execution was rough around the edges. His behavior says something about his thinking. As long as everyone's been driven out, the conflict is over. It's getting late. <clears throat> you should go back to the town and get some rest. The wildfire? The vagrants? Svarok? The changes in here are greater than I ever imagined. <sighs> what exactly did the underworld go through after the Silvermane Guards left? Sorry. Did you have something you wanted to say to me? I think I know what it will concern. Even if Oleg wasn't looking for me, I would have looked for him. I'm certain that the residents of the underground will have a lot they need to vent about. And, as a Silvermane guard, I have a lot that I need to ascertain. Nothing more. According to Oleg, he's a robot that took part in the War of Defense over 700 years ago. He possesses a near-human intelligence and rules over all the machinery in the underground. During the war, the Architects created astonishing mechanical soldiers. But the fight was so terrible that most were damaged or destroyed. The technology was lost. If what Oleg says is true, then Svarog is an architect creation left over from the old era. We do? I hadn't realized. I've received rigorous military training. Coordinating with soldiers under any circumstances is easy for me. I admit Zila is talented. We do work well together. But that's all there is to it. Hey, thanks for your concern. You should head back to the town. I'll do the same when Oleg and I are finished. So early! Let's look around. Oh, you must be Oleg's guests. Welcome to the Gerda Grand Hotel. Yep, you've probably seen that stylish Gerda Hotel above ground, right? Uh, not the most pleasant memories of that place. That's the above-ground branch of the Grand Hotel. A few hundred years ago, one ancestor of the Gerda family was ambitious and sought to build something big from nothing. He eventually realized his dream and opened a hotel branch in the most expensive area on the surface. Oh, people with big dreams have big determination. Oleg wants me to take good care of y'all. Here's the key. You'll be staying in our most spacious guest room. What do you think? Should we go ahead and call it a day? Or walk around a bit more first? <sighs> time to rest again. I hope there aren't any surprises this time. That Oleg, he seems sincere. What do you guys think? Would you look at her, flirting 
carrying out something so irresponsible. Hmm, a lot like you, actually. But if you ask for my opinion, it's better to be safe than sorry. Ah, oh, fine. We'll keep our guards up. Our last hotel experience was eventful, to say the least. One of us should keep watch tonight. Uh, keep watch? Are we space cowboys now? I guess this is the Cosmic Wild West. <laughs> Anyone else sleepy? Uh, no, I don't. Oh. Besides, I've never pulled an all-nighter before. Do you know how bad it is for your skin? I'll keep watch. Branya, did you finish talking to Oleg? Hope he didn't make things difficult for you. Not really. Though it wasn't the friendliest conversation. We didn't see eye to eye on everything. I've come to know a great deal in a short time. Doubt I'll be able to fall asleep tonight. I doubt I'll be able to sleep either. Not that I don't trust you. It's just, you're a Silver Mane Guard officer in the underground. There might be people looking to harm you. I wouldn't be surprised if there are. Silver Mane Guards have a lot to make amends for down here. If someone had made a stand in the outset and explained the consequences to Madame Kokolia. Oh, forget it. It's meaningless to talk about it now. You don't need to worry about me. Oleg guaranteed that I wouldn't be harmed. He seemed like a man of his word. Go and rest. I lost her. My wish. Your so-called plan. What is the point of it all? Your grief. Sorry. Abandon them all. Silence! She is my daughter. My only, you soulless thing. How could you begin to fathom? You will never understand. Never! again. Such a strange dream. May as well go for a walk if I can't sleep. Who goes there? Show yourself! Oh, it's you. Don't sneak up behind me next time. Lucky for you, I wasn't armed. <laughs> no sleep for you either, huh? Understand. The more that weighs on your mind, the more your fears become dreamscapes. Actually, seeing as there's no one around, it, can I ask you some things? This Stellaron you speak of, if you were to find it, how sure are you that you could stop the Eternal Freeze? Your confidence actually makes me even more worried. This isn't like helping a child make a snowball. You know, it was difficult for me to believe you. Some of the words you use are too alien for those that have lived their entire life in Bellabog. As far as I was concerned, Madame Kakolia's order to arrest you sounded reasonable. But why didn't she issue it straight away? She must have realized something about you. Something I haven't yet been able to perceive for myself. It bothers me. What must have transpired to cause her such a drastic change? Ah, still, orders are orders. 
It's not for soldiers to question their superiors. I don't need you to remind me. And I didn't have every confidence that I was doing the right thing. But the sense of duty to carry out an order is bound to prevail with me. In the past, overworld soldiers on the front line would lose their lives in droves. And yet, the Fragmentum's advance would remain unaffected. Nevertheless, that was her reason for deploying all the Silvermane guards to the front line. The transport line for supplies in Geomarrow remained open. But the passage between the surface and the underground ceased. Huh. I approved of that decision. I never thought that the Underworld would sink into such ruin without the Silverman Guards. Perhaps Mother was wrong. But how can I change her mind? I've tried, but she won't listen. I don't know how to get through to her. Help me change the mind of the Madam Guardian? <laughs> Not easy. But he knows that better than I do. Uh, the more I think about it, the more disoriented I get. Which in turn makes me think about it even more. I just want a better life for the people of Bellabog. Maybe you're right. Or not. Right now, I... I just need more time to think. Walk with me. Let's forget our problems for a while. I'm so I can't remember the last time I went for a walk like this. I never thought I'd take one through such a strange place. With someone I'd only just gotten to know. It's so quiet here. I'm not used to it. Ah, the quieter things are around you, the louder they are in your head. longer can you last with your current supplies? Is that Zila? Let's go take a look. I know. I'll go to Rivet Town and bring them back for you. It's too dangerous to go alone. Get Oleg to send someone with you. And the rest of Wildfire has barely gotten any sleep the last few days. They should rest. They'd only be holding their eyelids open and slowing me down. Besides, didn't you say some of the miners were gravely injured? Lives are on the line. <gasps> Aren't you supposed to be sleeping? What are you doing out here? Up to no good, perhaps? We're just having a walk neither of us could sleep. You can rescind your baseless accusations. <laughs> Walk somewhere else, then. Easy, Zila. Maybe they can help. <laughs> I'm grateful. Here's the situation. The clinic is packed full of people injured in the mines incident. Since you helped us resolve things, Zila and I have been busy caring for them. As you know, the Underground is lacking resources to begin with. Add on the sudden nature of the incident, and it's no surprise that the clinic is almost out of medical supplies. We need to acquire more... somehow. <sighs> the 
situation in other towns is even worse than ours. As the Fragmentum spreads underground, more monsters go roaming around, causing trouble for all the towns. That means more vagrants in the mines. The town's resources have been swallowed up by the Fragmentum. To get anything now, people have to risk their lives. Easy now, Zila. Anger isn't good for one's health. Zila and I actually aren't from here. We both come from an industrial town to the north. A few years ago, the Fragmentum began to seep into the town center. I used to manage an orphanage, a clinic there. But after the Fragmentum corroded the area, I had no choice but to move here to Boulder Town. After all, I have to survive myself if I want to save more people. Go to a corroded town to collect some useful resources? I'm in. You want to come as well? But you look quite tired. Hold up. I never said you could join us. People's lives are at stake. Why wouldn't you want another person to help? Besides, I have some experience with the Fragmentums. I'm sure I will be of use. <sighs> well, just don't slow me down. Zila's lack of outright rejection means she approves of you. <laughs> With you all accompanying her, my mind will be more at ease. Come, let me give you a list of materials we need. The place you're going to is called Rivet Town. Follow the path through the mountains to the north for a bit, and you'll arrive there. <sighs> let me think. Uh, I'm almost out of metal plates and bandages used for immobilizing broken bones. There's a market in the center of Rivet Town. Residents left behind piles of materials there when they evacuated. Please look for some there. Oh, also rubbing alcohol. I kept a bunch at the orphanage, since the kids often got into tussles. <laughs> I didn't bring it with me when I left. Oh, I hope it's still intact. Lastly, painkillers. There should be a bunch stored in the old lab. Hopefully they haven't been destroyed by monsters. These should be enough to get by for a bit longer. Be careful. Don't push yourselves too hard. Metal plates and bandages, rubbing alcohol, and painkillers. Got it. Piece of cake. Let's go. If we leave now, we can still make it back before sundown. When it comes to helping injured people groaning in pain, the sooner the better. If we hadn't happened to be passing by, were you really planning on going into the Fragmentum alone? Of course. What's all the fuss about? I've done that loads of times. So reckless. According to the rules of the Silvermane Guards, any expedition into the Fragmentum must have a squad of at least four members, as well as a communications officer. Exactly. A rule of the Silvermane Guards. Don't apply your rules to us. We're here. This is Rivet Town. It looks familiar. Let's go, and watch your step. I haven't been here in a long time. There are probably some monsters around. We can't see anything here. Let's find higher ground to get a better view. house on the hill? That's Natasha's old orphanage. After Oleg found me, he sent me there. I spent over half my childhood in that place. Natasha said that the house was donated by some rich businessman. Whatever his business may have been, he must have been a good person. I miss those carefree days as a kid. Huh. What? Nothing to say? No, it's just... This place seems familiar somehow. Uh, never mind. Weirdo. Look down there. See the mess that remains of those old stalls? 
That's Rivet Town's market. The supplies and Tashawans are probably there. Let's keep moving. Watch out for monsters. Careful! Enemies ahead. These aren't like vagrants. They won't... Uh... Restaurant? <laughs> the most famous restaurant in town. Natasha would bring the kids who behaved well here for a special meal. So, did she ever bring you? <laughs> Do I seem like I was a goody two-shoes? Of course not. There's a bunch of crates piled over there. Maybe we can find what we're <laughs> Darn. How could they all be empty? Now even the monsters are gathering supplies? The monsters of the Fragmentum don't need any materials we humans use. And if they did take anything, this place would look much messier. You mean that someone else got here and took everything before us? It's just a guess, but there are also some footprints on the ground here. Hmm. The scent of dirt is still fresh. They can't have come too long before us. Let's go then. We need to find something, even if we have to search every corner of this market. Eric? Hey, brat! How could you come here by yourself? Oh, don't you know how dangerous this place is? Zila! Uh, you aren't the boss of me. I can go wherever I want. It's none of your beeswax. You took the materials and hid them all here. Not bad, kid. But if we didn't take care of those monsters, what were you planning to do? Just stay here, shaking in your boots? Who asked you to do anything? I was just about to escape. I didn't need your help at all. Still stubborn, huh? Then tell me, how exactly were you gonna get those big metal plates out of here past those monsters? Um... There's always a way. so polite to him. Everyone in the underworld knows this brat is a no-good thief. If I remember correctly, even the clothes you're wearing came off another kid's back. Uh, about that. Tell us, what do you even want metal plates and gauze bandages for? We need them to save people. Two hundred. What? Uh... 200 shield? Are you kidding me? You want to negotiate? Not much, but I didn't bring my coin purse. You're actually planning to give this little crook money? I I'm telling you, this is his same old trick. No! Not this time. I really need money. <laughs> My daddy. Pretending to use your dad again as an excuse. If he knew about this, you'd be in big trouble. No! <laughs> Zila, that's enough. It's Eric, right? Here, you can have this. What? What's this? This is a medal given to me by the architects. See that blue stone in the middle? That's a geomero crystal of the highest purity. You need money for your family, right? Take this and show it to a knowledgeable buyer, and they'll instantly know how valuable it is. You, I... But, you'll have to promise me one thing. You'll never steal other people's things again. Promise? I... I promise. I'll never steal things again. Then, it's a deal. If you go back on your promise, I'm going to bring my Silvermane guards with me and catch you myself. Here, take the medal and go back to the town. 
We already took care of any threat on the way. You'll be safe. Thank you. Whoever you are, you guys can take all of these things. Uh, you, you guys need to be careful, too. There seems to be something real scary in that house up on the hill. Oh, right. Uh, the road across from the market is blocked. If you want to go further, you'll have to go to the shopping street. Got it. Thanks for the tip. That object was pretty important to you, right? Are you sure you're okay just giving it to Eric like that? If it will make him change his ways, it's more than worth it. <laughs> what if he doesn't? From a young age, my mother taught me to be forgiving and to preserve the goodwill in people's hearts. Even if I am but a small glimmer of light in this world, I must try my best to shine brightly for others. I must give him a chance, Zila, because other people can't. I don't really get what you just said. Anyway, <clears throat> we should get moving. Eric said that we need to take the shopping street to go any further. I think I still remember where it is. This way. This is the street, all right. The orphanage should be at the end. These shops and signs. When do I feel like I've seen them before? But when? The entrance to the orphanage is up this way. I wonder what the old place is like now. Maybe some things will still look familiar. These stairs they seem to have become more narrow. Almost there. I didn't expect this place to be so well preserved. <sighs> we made it! Hmm. It's been so long. But this place hasn't changed one bit. It looks like there's a lot of stuff piled outside. Let's go see if there's any rubbing alcohol for Nat. These crates have been sitting here for many years, right? Even if they have materials in them, are you sure they are still usable? Do you think undergrounders care about expiration dates? Even having any supplies is a miracle in itself. No. No. Empty. How are they all empty? Who could have... I've only seen this kind of monster before in the restricted zone. <laughs> I don't care how big you are. You dare sneak up on us from behind. This is it for you, pal! <laughs> that was it? <sighs> nah, I could have taken it on by myself. Still, fighting alongside you two was pretty fun. <sighs> Should be all clear now. Let's poke around. The kids at the orphanage were always getting into scraps when we played out here. If I remember it right, there ought to be some supplies for our cuts and bruises stored in that corner there. I just hope the monster didn't get to them. It wasn't my imagination. Huh? What are you talking about? This building? This playground equipment? I've seen it all before. <laughs> what? Come on. The overground and underground have been sealed off from each other for over ten years. It would have been used if a Silvermane guard had come down here, let alone an overworld princess. Wait. Unless... before that... Yes, it's a possibility. That would explain why my memory of it is so blurry. Come on, I need to look around a bit more before I can be sure. I found this. Here, take it. What is this? A brooch? 
Natasha would often teach us how to make different handicrafts. This must be some kid's masterpiece. And why give it to me? You gave your medal to that kid, Eric. This thing might not be as valuable, but it's at least a replacement of sorts. But didn't someone work hard to make this? I can't just take it from here. <sighs> you sure are prissy, huh? Just take it. What's up here? Some kind of toy? Yep. You pick. Red or blue? Hmm. Blue. <laughs> Look at this. After over ten years, the teeth marks are still here. Teeth marks? <laughs> Alright, well, this one time, a big kid was trying to steal this toy from me. I could not wrestle him for it, so I just bit down hard and hung on for dear life. Hmm. How boorish. Ugh, the swing is covered in dust. Hey, don't sit on it. It's filthy. Ah, <sighs> it sure brings back memories. I still remember one time I swung super high and everyone was scared I would fly off. Who knew swinging could be so intense? At the time, I wanted to swing myself into the sky and fly up to the overworld. So dangerous. You're lucky to have lived till now. <laughs> Aren't we all, though? We've looked everywhere but here. I hope my memory is right. Yes, we found it! Great, and it's barely damaged. Nat wouldn't have expected her old supplies from years ago to have stayed in such good condition. You should still check the expiration date for things like rubbing alcohol. If it's expired, it won't be effective. Hmm, true. Let me check a few bottles. Huh? What's this? This is... This is... Something from when I was a child. When you were a child? Are you sure? Yes. I remember now. I, I used to live here. Before the architects took me away. Be before Madame Cocolia adopted me, I used to live here. I'm an undergrounder. You're... an undergrounder? Wait a minute. You're saying that Cocolia, the Supreme Guardian, adopted you? Then... Yes. I'm the successor chosen by the architects. In the future, I will become the guardian who leads Bellabog. <sighs> Why? Why didn't I remember this until now? My childhood memories are so blurry. Mother would never do that to me. There's no way she would. The architect said that the Guardian's successor is selected from among all people in Bellabog. The selection process can take anywhere from a few years to a few decades. During that time, all children of the appropriate age in both the Overworld and the Underworld will be tested. In the end, only one child deemed as worthy will be chosen. I must have been chosen from among the children here and then taken to the surface. The kids at the orphanage are always coming and going. I never thought that there would have been a future supreme guardian among us. Does Nat know about this? Could she have been keeping it a secret? 
I don't think she knows. The selection of the successor is done with utmost secrecy. And the child chosen must completely say goodbye to their past. And thus, I became the daughter of Madame Cacolia. My only identity is that of guardian successor. But I'm not good enough. Every day I see Silvermane guards sacrifice their lives in the Fragmentum, but I've never had the resolve to try to change Mother's mind. The Underworld has been struggling, but I never tried to help. I didn't even know that it was my own home that had fallen into such a dire state. In the end, I haven't been able to guard anything. How could they have thought that I was worthy to be the successor? Hey, are you done? Huh? Well, well, well. So annoying. I... Uh, what? <laughs> what? You thought I should feel sorry for you after your little speech? You can hide in your palace while you fuss over your overworld problems. And on the front line, it's not even you who's putting their life in danger. But in the underworld, what do we worry about? If we'll have food for our next meal, or survive to the next week? <sighs> Even if I am but a small glimmer of light in this world, I must try my best to shine brightly for others. Didn't you say that? Well, if you really want to protect everyone, what are you standing here crying for? Get to it! You're right. You're right. Self-pity doesn't help solve anything. Thank you, Zila. Usually when I feel sorry for myself, I am met with gentle consolation. Never has anyone dared to be tough and make me snap out of it. <laughs> I'm no good at consoling, but I can hit you on the head a few times, no problem. I can tell that you have a big burden to carry. Why do you force yourself to? As the successor to the Guardian of Balabog, I must always be vigilant of my behavior and thoughts. Yeah, yeah, Lady Branya. <laughs> Miss Future Supreme Guardian comes from the same orphanage as me. Who thought it would be a good idea to put us together, huh? How about I show you around the orphanage a bit more? Unlike you, my memories from when I was little are crystal clear. Okay. I'll indulge in old memories with you for a while. I should let those two people run for a bit. The only thing left to find is painkillers. I'll see if there's any nearby. Oh! It's here! We found it! Ah! Thank you, Perkins! Don't mention it, Clara. Warning! Warning! Danger detected! Protect, Clara. Initiating active defense mode. Perkins, don't! Stop! I've seen this person before. She... she's not bad, right? Command receive. Danger removed. Deactivating active defense mode. This place is dangerous. You should leave. Oh, I came here for these painkillers, too. There are a lot of people hurt at the Vagrant Camp. I guess the miners are no different? <sighs> if everyone could just get along, things would be easier. Mm. Here you are. I hope the medicine is of help to you.
Mr. Svarog, he... He's my family. I met Mr. Svarog when I was real little. He took me in and took care of me. I'm really sorry about what happened back in the Great Mine. Mr. Svarog doesn't trust any humans besides me. Especially everyone from Wildfire. He heard that the miners and vagrants had begun to engage in a large-scale conflict. He wanted to stop everyone from getting hurt fighting over the mines. Wildfire wants everyone to leave the underground. But Mr. Sparrow wants everyone to stay here. According to his calculations, the overground is already unsafe. Yes! At least according to Mr. Svarag's calculations. He says that his responsibility is preservation. To do that, he must make decisions that best protect humanity. I know that Wildfire wants to talk to Mr. Svarag, but no matter how many times you talk to him, Mr. Svarag won't change his mind. So please trust me. I'll try to persuade Mr. Svarag. Hopefully one day he'll finally listen. Clara, what are you doing here? You're... Miss Stila from Wildfire. I came here to... Why are you helping the vagrants look for medicine? If they're so great, how could they make a little girl go around running errands for them? N no it's not like that. I wasn't made to do anything. It's just that the living conditions for the vagrants aren't great. There's not even a clinic in their camp, so I wanted to help them out. Also, not all of them are bad people. Everyone just wants to survive. <laughs> Miss Sila, did this medicine belong to Miss Natasha? Then, can you give me some? The vagrant's injuries are quite serious. I see. Let's split these painkillers then. R really? We don't need to ask Miss Natasha first? If I know Nat, she won't mind. Although, this will make it more difficult for us. She'll understand. She always does. Great! Thank you, Miss Sila. Are you leaving? This old town is too dangerous. We'll accompany you part of the way. It, it's fine. I have Perkins for company. And... I have some more things I need to look for here first. Understood. Be careful, though. Metal plates and bandages, rubbing alcohol, painkillers. Great, that's everything. Let's go report back to Natasha in Boulder Town. I think we can still make it before sunset. Nat, we're back. <laughs> that's our Zila. Nothing if not punctual. So, did you find any usable supplies? Oh, let me see. Metal plates, gauze bandages, painkillers, rubbing alcohol. Ah, oh, perfect. That's everything I needed. Huh. It's just... There are less painkillers than I'd expected. Did someone break into the storage room? Clara? Huh. If she was there too, then I understand. She wants to look after the injured vagrants, right? Clara's always been a kind-hearted girl. <laughs> I think you made the right decision. <sighs> Still, it means I'm going to have to draw up a detailed dosage plan. Hey, don't worry. I'll help you. Um, no need. I'll handle the clinic. <laughs> 
I assume you three have more important things to be getting on with, right? Oleg will be waiting, not to mention your two companions. I'm sure they won't mind. They seemed in good spirits. <laughs> I bet old Oleg wants to talk about Svarog. We should get going. Sorry, Nat. We'll have to leave the wounded to you. Oh, no worries. I hope things go smoothly. Ready? Uh, hey, they're finally back. Uh, I wasn't worried about you. If you must know, I was wondering if Branya was okay. Oh, please. You've barely sat still since they left. <laughs> It's good to have everyone back together. Let me get straight to it. Regarding the Stellaron and your predicament in the overworld, your friends have gone over both with me again. The last time I saw Kogolia, she was an impressive young lady. I never thought that after becoming the Guardian. All I can say is that I sympathize with your situation. Rest easy. Wildfire won't go behind your back on this. Your plan sounds a bit like the ravings of a drunken miner, but at least you're offering a road forwards. We Underworlders haven't had a road to anywhere for a long time now, and you can see how things have become. I'm willing to give you guys a shot. Don't worry, Mr. Oleg. We'll make sure you don't regret it. Ravings of a drunken miner is a little harsh. Maybe it is, but I think we need to set our sights on something a bit more realistic. You guys want to know the whereabouts of the Stellaron. Wildfire wants to remove the restrictions on the Underworld. In other words, Svarog is the target of both our efforts. If we can't deal with the boss, we can't deal with anything. <laughs> he wouldn't understand. You're forgetting he's a robot. It'd be faster to smash him to scrap metal. We should make preparations for both approaches. Of course, it's better to settle matters through peaceful means, but if the situation changes, we must be prepared for armed conflict at a moment's notice. Wildfire has tried many times to make contact with Svarag, without success. He has no intention of engaging with us. At our current strength, it would be incredibly dangerous to use force. Svarag's robots don't fear sacrifice. And I don't want to risk underworld lives. But things have changed. Your arrival constitutes an external variable for Svarog. I may not have the full picture, but perhaps you guys have an opportunity to sway him. That would be best. <laughs> Our scheme is coming along nicely. But I fear that Svarog just isn't the swaying type. You'll understand when you get to his territory. Things never run smoothly down here. What about you, Miss Silvermane? You're the only one here that isn't compelled to do or die with Svarog. I'd like to hear your plan. Oh, the Underworld is still a part of Belabog. If Svarog's existence constitutes a threat to the people here, I will of course stand with you. <laughs> Excellent. An enlightened answer, young lady and spoken like a true successor to the Guardianship. Seeing as we're all on the same side, there's no reason to delay. Let's go. I've arranged for a guide to take you to Svarog. Wildfire's relationship with Svarog has been hostile for a long time now. Accompanying you would only lead to misunderstandings. We'll be nearby, awaiting orders. If things go south, we'll be there in no time. Zila, perhaps you can take our outsider friends the rest of the way. Mm, I'm on it, boss. Hook? You. This I really 
wasn't expecting. So, the moles are a part of wildfire. Ah, that's right. It's me, Pitch Dark Hook the Great. What do you want? <laughs> Kiddo, I think there's been a misunderstanding. I will be your guide, friends, by order of Chief Oleg. I gotta say I'm a little upset at the thought of you choosing a toddler over your old buddy Sampo. All right, all right, don't get started. But I want to ask you something. Everyone in Wildfire knows the location of Svarog's lair. Why do we need you as a guide? Uh, my specialty's in the field, perhaps. Wildfire may know where the base is, but have they ever been inside? You've been inside? No, but I felt my way around the outside and picked up more than a few clues. I can help you. You have my word. Hey, what are you trying to say? Name me someone above or below ground that walks the dock like Sempo Koski. My legacy will prove that Sempo Koski was nothing but a willing and devoted servant of... Oh, enough! Jeez, we believe you, okay? Show us the way already! Great! Stay close. Oh, Sampo, are we there yet? Do you have to ask every other minute, Missy? Two more steps, just two more steps, and you're there. This is Farog's lair? I thought it'd be cold and lifeless. Oh, turns out it's pretty busy. Many vagrants are staying here temporarily. Their homes were overrun by monsters. Isn't it dangerous for them to make camp right under Svarog's metal nose? No. Svarog may be ruthless, but he never attacks without reason. For those with no home, this is actually a safe place to be. <laughs> if I hadn't moved away when I did, I'd probably be where they are right now. Hold still. My design has been superseded by newer models. My components are no longer valuable. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm not interested in selling your components. Alas, this place is a bit of a mixed bag. Plenty of characters? Keep your wits about you, friends. Don't let anyone dis- What a heavy gate. Uh, okay, watch this! Open Sesame! Is that a secret code or something? It's an imaginary password that children like to use. And I don't think it's going to be of much use. Whoa, whoa! Try it open? In front of all these vagrants and robots? They have eyes, you know. Luckily for us, I've already figured out the mechanism for this gate. They don't just let any Joe Schmo in and out of Boss Farag's territory. I mean, if you want to see the big cheese himself, you need certification. A uh, certification? Correct. Only prospectors with the right certification can get in or out. These prospectors collect mechanical remnants from all over the underground and then bring them to Svarog for him to repair. Honestly, it's a very profitable little venture. If only I'd beaten them to it. <laughs> They'd be calling me Sampo Bosky by now. A uh, time out. Where do we get this certification? Oh, that's simple. You see the robots over by the vagrants? They're all Svorog scouts. Every one of them is commanded to maintain order here. Apart from them keeping a watchful eye on these hooligans, another one of their duties is processing. Anyone who wants to become a prospector has to pass a test from these walk-in stoplights first. Not a clue! <laughs> I never had the urge to go on a Svarog suicide mission before. You guys are the ones that want in. Why not go and ask the robots? It feels like the people here are all under the supervision of robots. 
This would be unthinkable on the surface. Robots are merely tools in the overworld. Don't take Svarag as an ordinary robot. He's... Uh, special. This has to be one of them, right? It looks so... lame. Is it even awake in there? Maybe it's broken down. <laughs> that scared me. Protocol. Initiating. Scanning. Verifying. Certification failure. Subject has yet to obtain access permissions. Launching processing. Huh? Are we starting now? Launching stage one processing. Please listen to the following question. Who is the reigning champion of the Internal Combustion Engine Wrap Tournament? Infernal Construction what now? How would we know anything about that? Sampo, do you know the answer? Sampo Gasky always knows the... Wait, uh, what did it say again? <sighs> Aren't you supposed to be dependable? Well, I don't know everything. Sometimes you gotta ask around if you want to know the answer. Don't panic. Let's listen in to what the vagrants are talking about. We might just hit the jackpot. Please answer the following question. Who is the reigning champion of the internal combustion engine wrap tournament? Correct answer. Uh, whoa! Was that a lucky guess? <gasps> Did you go to a music festival without us? Certification result, success. Requisite certifications remaining, two. Please extend your right hand. My right hand? Here you go. Why is this part of the... Oh, hey, hey, ow, ow, ow! So this is the certification mark? Great, only two more steps to go. Let's move. Protocol. Initiating. Scanning. Ugh, I'm so sick of repeating this. Huh? What did this bucket of bolts just say? <laughs> Seems like this one's got a temper. Ugh, let's get this over with. Did you get your first certification? If not, then you're wasting your time. You mean this? Here, look! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Here comes your question. Listen up. Riddle me this. A microcrystalline unit should be connected to which component? Huh? Lucky guess. Ugh, now I have to do this again. Put your hand out. Huh? Me again? It hurts, you know. Uh, ow. There, one step left. Now get out of here and leave me in peace. Whatever the case, we'll need it to identify our certifications. Hmm, there's something wrong with this one. Protocol. Init nish 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 nish. Initialization failure. Attempting system restoration. Not encouraging. System restoration failure. Core module damaged. External threat detected. Threat elimination activated. Initializing combat module. <laughs> Finally, no more racking our brains. This rust bucket's about to meet its maker. <laughs> Learned how to behave now. Let me try and reset its system. Certification system online. Please extend your right hand. Oh, why is it always me? Ah, how come it hurt even more than the other two? At least that's the final step. We can get in now, right? 
<laughs> Farag's certification system is no match for us. This better work. Let's get back to the gate and give it a go. See, not so bad having Sampo on the team after all, huh? Right? Chief Oleg knew all along that I... Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I'll commend you to the Chief. No need to waste your time. All right. Well, let me issue a warning now. Everything from here on out is uncharted territory. We must proceed with the utmost caution. Now to set the record straight with Sparog. Ooh, did anyone hear what I just said? Out of the gate? Why is there another It looks like this gate has a more complicated structure than the last one. Sampo, what is this? Uh, huh? Sampo? Oh, where is he? Oh, where did he run off to? He was just here a second ago. Hmm. This isn't the first time. It's that same type of robot again! Oh, please don't tell me there's another round of processing. Visitors for Zvarog detected. Protocol initiating. Scanning. Verifying. Oh, good plan. Treat the robots like guard dogs. How is that going to improve our chances? Certification failure. Subject has yet to obtain access permissions. Request rejected. Visitors must acquire access permissions from Miss Clara. Clara? Oh, the girl we saw in the Great Mine? We need to get permissions from her? What's she got to do with this? Family. Huh, weird. Don't trouble yourself about it. We need to find her. Hmm. I don't know if this will work, but it's worth a try. Where is Clara right now? Obtaining audio data. Please wait. The energy core is bearing component is broken. If we don't repair it soon, the settlement will be pitch black. Timmy, I'm going back to Rivet Town. Maybe I can recover some usable components. You need to guard the gate while I'm gone. Recording recovery complete. Resuming execution of Clara's commands. She went back? But we were just there. Sounds like we better head over again. Wait, you guys went sightseeing in another town? Uh, it wasn't as fun as you think. Indeed. And that little girl heading into the Fragmentum all by herself. It doesn't bear thinking about. Her strength belies her appearance, but even so... <laughs> you don't look so tough yourself. Well, let's find her. Svarog's not going anywhere. Uh, this is a big town. Where should we start? Clara said she was going to find components, right? Let's start with Nat's storage room. Isn't this the robot that was following Clara around? These can openers all look the same. How can you tell them apart? Shh. It's about to say something. Listen. Initializing self repair module. Initialization failure. Clara in danger. Must protect. In danger? What do you mean? Workshop target must be in. Does it mean that a monster appeared over at the workshop? Clara, she... 
Not good. She's in danger. Quick, let's head over to the workshop and check it out. I know the way. We have the numerical advantage. Are you okay, Clara? Are you hurt? Th thanks, everyone. I'm fine. Just a few scratches. You shouldn't be running around by yourself. It's too dangerous. What are you looking for here? There is a fault with one of the energy supply units at the base. If I don't repair it soon, everyone at the settlement will be affected. I knew there was a workshop in this town, so I wanted to try my luck here. I found all the components I need, but then I ran into a monster. You guys saved me. I'll tell Mr. Svarag about it. Uh-huh. What do you need to see him for? I can pass him a message. No. This time, we need to set things straight with him, face to face. Can you take us to meet him? But... Mr. Svarg doesn't like talking to others. Especially Wildfire. <laughs> Don't I know it. But he's evaded communication with us for too long. This time, we have to see him. Um... I know you're working hard for the people down here. But Mr. Svarg doesn't trust human emotions. He only trusts his calculation results. So, I can't take you to see him. If Mr. Svarg and you had a fight, someone would get hurt for sure. Maybe even bystanders. Listen, kid, you... <sighs> Clara, you said it yourself before, right? Svarag's duty is to protect the underworld and preserve the civilization here. We have the same wish. Why would he refuse to cooperate with us? I know Mr. Svarag. He isn't affected by other people's wishes. He only follows logical judgments. Terrible things are happening on this world. Mr. Svarag thinks that the overworld will end soon. What? According to his calculation results, the strength of the Underworlders won't be enough to prevent the disaster. His plan is to keep the Underworlders away from the source of the disaster, so they can survive for longer. Isn't that just putting us in a cage? It's ridiculous! What difference does it make if our death gets postponed a couple of days? How is that better than putting up a fight? I'll definitely return the favor, but not like this. Um, if you don't mind, I still have important things to do. I'll go back now. Clara! It's no use, Zila. She's made up her mind. I could tell from her expression. You will have to think of another way. That's no ordinary kid. So young and yet so... stubborn? No. Intelligent? She's incisive and determined. In sharp contrast to you, March. Did you really have to add that last part? It looks like we'll have to get past Clara if we want to speak to Svarok. If we circumvent Clara and the gate, Svarag will only identify us as intruders. He'll be even more likely to give us the cold shoulder. Mm, isn't a robot shoulder cold to begin with? Clara mentioned Svarag's calculation results many times. 
the strength of the Underworlders won't be enough to prevent the disaster. Those were her exact words. For me, that's our starting point. So, you think Sparog's logic has a hole in it? No. His calculation is correct. At its current strength, it is highly unlikely that Wildfire would be able to resolve the problems stemming from the Stellaron. However, that calculation didn't take the present situation into account. There's a new variable yet to be added to the equation. Hmm. Precisely. If we can make Svarag believe in us, we can almost certainly overturn the result of his calculation, and we'll be one step closer to peace talks. But how can we get him to do that? <laughs> Showing him some of our photos wouldn't cut it, right? There's always a way. First, we have to convince Clara. I assume she must be on her way back to the robot settlement. Let's catch up with her. She turned that way, quick! Hmm. Why won't it... Ah. I can't figure it out. Oh, it's you. You came with me after all. You keep saying that, but... Are you repairing this installation, Clara? Hit a snack? Huh? How did you know? The dimensions and wear of these two roller components look very different from the rest of the unit. You must have only just replaced them. You replaced the damage components, but the unit isn't starting up as normal. That's what you're trying to figure out, right? Yeah. I fixed a lot of things before, but I never had to repair one as complicated as this. Why isn't Sparog helping you? I don't want to disturb him. This installation was... accidentally damaged by two of the vagrants. If Mr. Sparog finds out, they'll get in big trouble. You know, Clara, if you're too kind, people can take advantage of you. Ah. I think I found the source of the problem. You replaced the rollers, but the bearing is causing a jam. And there's a misalignment. You two, give me a hand. We should be able to fix it between us. More fixing? I'm getting good at this. Can we really fix this? Relax, we got this. Right, Don Hung? Less asking, more helping. Is that long? Whoa, it lit up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no need. We hardly lifted a finger. So, the settlement's energy supply problem is solved for the time being? Yes. The people on the outskirts don't need to worry about heat or light now. Um... I understand. You helped a lot of injured people in the mine, and you risk going into the town for supplies. You're good people. If there's any other way I can help you, I'll do my best. This... Uh, how are we gonna convince her? The variable is... Uh, our arrival! No outsiders set foot in the underground for over a decade! Clara, you're observant, right? Take a look at us. Do we look like Underworlders? 
Well, uh, you do look very different from other people. Right! That's because we're not from here. We've never been a factor in Sparog's calculations. And if those calculations are based solely on the strength of the Underworlders, then the results don't apply to the present situation. When did Svarog start doing his calculations, Clara? It was... a long time ago. The same time the Underworld was sealed off, I think. Circumstances have changed since then. There's a Silvermane guard down here now. Is that part of Svarog's calculation? Not to mention we're... There's just no way that Sparrow's calculations would have included variables like us, you know? Different planet? Don't treat me like a child. Those are just made-up stories that grown-ups like to tell. I don't... She and March aren't lying, Clara. I believe them. Branya, do you really? I know how you feel, Clara. You want new hope for the underground, but you don't want anyone to get hurt in the process, right? I also have doubts, but my gut tells me that March, Dan, Hung, and she, they are the new hope this world has been waiting for. Let them meet Svarag, and let's see if his calculation result is any different for you, for him. There's no harm in trying, right? Mm. I... <sighs> okay, I'll take you to see Mr. Svarag. understand now. Trying to change Mr. Sparrow's mind on my own would take forever. Even if I kept trying until I was all grown up, I don't think I could do it. And all the while, people would be getting sick, losing their homes, and fighting. Just like in the mine. I don't want that to happen. If you guys really believe that you can convince Mr. Sparrow, then... I need to be brave too. Everyone, follow me. Branya, I didn't know you'd stick up for us like that back there. Well said. It was nothing, I just said what I truly felt. I'm back, Timmy. Welcome back, Miss Clara. Timmy, open the gate, please. I want to see Mr. Sparrow. Outsiders detected. Do you wish to permit access? It's okay. They're all my guests. Command received. Access restriction terminal unlocked. Welcome back, Miss Clara and guests. Oh, uh, if you can, please try not to upset Mr. Svarog. It's okay, Clara. We're here to reason with him. I'll leave negotiations to you guys. They're not my strong point. Negotiating with robots. I can't say I've tried it before. Are you ready? I'm back, Mr. Sparrow. I see that the energy supply system is back online. Thank you, Clara. But why have you brought them? Mr. Sparrow, they want to talk to you about going to the surface. Analyzing. Analysis result. Target does not belong to wildfire. Background unknown. Classification unknown. You have arrived on Clara's recommendation. I will give you an opportunity to speak. Oh, 
Hey, sounds like he's willing to communicate. Quick, time to smooth talk him. Said question lacks the necessary context to be answered. Proceed with your central point. Do not waste this world's valuable time. Uh, he cut you off completely. This guy. Stay focused. Remember, we have to make him see that we're a variable in the calculation. Stellaron. Searching database. Access denied. Discussing Stellaron with unauthorized targets. Prohibited. You are broaching a secret that lies at the heart of this world. A secret that should remain unknown to humanity. Reassessing targets. Threat index raised. I demand that you reveal your true intention. As expected. He knows of the Stellaron. But it's a restricted topic. We've come this far. Out with it already! Just be straight with him. Everything depends on it. Historical records state that humanity has already made multiple efforts to engage with the Stellaron. Without exception. These efforts have been motivated by human greed, attempts to secure the article for a selfish end. As instructed by the Architects, any attempt to engage with the Stellaron will result in grave consequences. Reassessing. Target Threat Index Critical. Uh, what should we do? This is going from bad to worse. There is no evidence to suggest you are an exception. Calculation result remains unchanged. Peacekeeping protocol temporarily disengaged. Requesting extermination protocol launch. E extermination? In the literal sense? Peace talks are over. March, prepare for combat. Mr. Sparrow, please don't. Leave, Clara. Clara, it's dangerous here. Find somewhere to hide. <sighs> Looks like we have to take action after all. Prototype number three. Monitoring automaton Svarov. Extermination protocol launch. Successful. Annihilation permitted. the cave isn't beautiful. People still want to know what it's like. Decision-making authority to outsiders. 
outsiders. Granted access to Stellar Intelligence. So... So we did it? his memory bank really does contain data on the Stellaron. Is this it, Nat? Us? Wildfire? The Underworld? Did... Did we win? No, Zila. Our battle. Their battle. It's just beginning. feeling in my chest. I'm ready. Reveal the truth. I'm listening. the Stellaron data and records. Do you wish to proceed, outsiders? Requesting database materials cache, serial number 13175, encryption level highest. Request approved. Transmission. This is the fruit of many years of research, Madam Guardian. The evidence is irrefutable. This so-called Stellaron struggle to accept this conclusion, Doctor. If we were to tell them that the almighty Lisa Rand activated this thing and triggered the eternal freeze... It's the truth, madam. The truth won't change with the opinions of the people. The reports before you are the precious result of painstaking effort on the part of Bellabog's greatest scholars. You must trust the weight of its conclusion. I have never doubted you, Doctor. On the contrary, I am resolute in the face of this conclusion. From the moment I took up this mantle, that voice, their voice, has made its home in my mind. I cannot shake them. I shouldn't be telling you this. Let's return to your research, Doctor. I'm afraid I cannot make these reports known to the public. Unless... Unless... Unless what? Please, proceed, madam. Unless you have found a way to completely destroy the Stellar. I understand. In the name of preservation, I will fulfill this mission. Cache number 13175. Transmission complete. Next transmission. Cache number 24830. Thank you. 
Cache number 20830. Transmission complete. Next transmission. Cache number 57614. This is... Why is there a robot here? During his life, this was Dr. Mearsheimer's personal robot bodyguard. I heard it's a prototype from the Great War. Since the doctor and his assistants passed away, it's remained here. It hasn't moved an inch. Oh. I see. Let's start. We must unearth the doctor's research conclusions. All of them. Madam Guardian, I've found them. All the documents are here. Good. That'll do. Madam Guardian, what should we do with the robot? Uh, it would seem a great waste to destroy it. Find someone to reset its system, and then arrange for it to be sent to the underworld. I hear that the development group is in need of a robot with defense capabilities. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Doctor. But these results must be taken care of by the architects. One day... Somebody will be able to carry out your behest. Cache number 57614. Transmission complete. Concluding data transmission. So, the truth is clear now, right? <laughs> It would appear that they never succeeded. Now only one question remains. Why would Kokolia exhibit such a sudden change in her attitude towards us? Branya, are you okay? I'm, I'm fine. I just feel a little faint. mother maybe maybe she wasn't aware maybe she i'm sorry it's no use lying to yourself branya it's time for you to make a decision <sighs> hey can i have a word with you i know that we'll need time to process this new information but we have to decide on our next plan as soon as possible Furnace core. The path to the surface is close at hand now. <laughs> Thank you. What you've done has brought new hope to the underworld. Now we have to wait and see. But maybe this will lead to a new lease on life. Well, you should really be thanking Sampo. If it weren't for his intel, we wouldn't have made it in time. As Wildfire's leader, I couldn't simply look on while you fought on our behalf. We had to come help. Huh? Huh? So you're the real chief? W what about Oleg? Oleg has always acted on my behalf. He helps me deal with all manner of problems in the Underworld. Thanks to him, I'm able to make time for the people. I do my best to make sure that they have everything they need. At the same time, I was formulating a plan to deal with Svarog. Your arrival unraveled that carefully crafted yet rudimentary plan. <laughs> and for that, you have my utmost thanks. <laughs> when the underworld recovers its freedom, the people will indeed extol you as heroes. However, even though Svarog is no longer sealing off the Furnace Core, there's no way that we undergrounders could go pouring onto the surface. That cold-blooded Supreme Guardian has used lies and tricks to keep the surface separated from the underground. If she detects any change in the underworld, I don't know what she might resort to. As for Wildfire, 
We need more time to build up our strength. No, but we need to wait for the opportune moment. In the meantime, I'm sending someone I trust to go with you. Zila. Didn't she tell you? In private, she insisted on accompanying you. Don't let her carefree nature fool you. She's actually very discerning and can read a situation like no one else. Zila is a talented scout and a quick thinker. She takes decisive action. She'll definitely be able to help you. Not to mention, you also have Bronya now. You're right. But with Zila by her side, I know she'll recover. Hey, when's the last time you got some rest? I heard that you've been on your feet looking for Sparog since Rivet Town. Health is everything. You won't be much use if you neglect yours. Let Wildfire take care of the Furnace Core for now. You head back and recuperate. If you're lucky, perhaps tomorrow you can return to the Overworld. Mr. Svarov, are you okay? Let me repair your language module first. Assessing. Language module operating as normal. Thank you, Clara. Did your memory module get damaged? Maybe I can fix that too. Retrieving memory module. Architect machine error records intact. War of Defense combat data intact. Geomero development group error records intact. Record of Clara's crafting of miniature magnetic drill rigs intact. Record of Clara's explanation of human sleeping in behavior intact. So your memory module is okay. I have made a backup of all records pertaining to you, Clara. Do not worry. Even the one about sleeping in? There are multiple backups. I can recover them at any time. Mr. Svarog, can I delete some of them? I cannot grant this request. Records pertaining to you constitute important data, Clara. They must remain intact. They are... Memories of family. I understand. Mr. Svarok, I still want to help you check a few other modules. Turn around a little. Ah, well, now that we're done with that whole situation in the underworld, we can finally look for the Stellaron. <sighs> but thinking about it, I feel a bit bad about Clara. We promised her that our talks with Sparog would go peacefully. You tried your best to persuade him. It's my fault for not preparing better for such a situation in advance. Uh, I didn't mean for you guys to start beating yourselves up over it. Look on the bright side. Things turned out all right, didn't they? Now everyone knows that the real problem here is the Stellaron, and they're willing to help us out. All in all, the mission is going super smoothly. But we still have a lot left to figure out. For instance... That's not a foremost concern. What's important is that we still don't have the exact location and coordinates of the Stellaron. Nor have we figured out the reason behind Kokolia's sudden change in attitude. We still haven't put all of the pieces together. Dreams? Oh, I remember you mentioned something about strange dreams before. Three dreams were the same, with Kokolia and that other voice. 
it would be weird to call it a coincidence. I'm wondering if these dreams aren't just random. If there's some meaning behind them. Huh. Maybe you're having them because... Because of the Stellaron inside her? That's my hunch. But I have no proof. <sighs> well, then that's as good as nothing for now. So, what should we do when we get back above ground? After all this talk, we're still back at square one. We solve a puzzle one piece at a time. Let's get some rest. We'll talk to Wildfire tomorrow and get to the bottom of this. Also, there's still one more key character we haven't talked to yet. Her connection to Kokolia may be the key to cracking this mystery. I've heard from Wildfire that you helped resolve that whole situation with Svarog. Amazing. It must have been exhausting. Please have some food and get a good night's rest. Over there. See that? That used to be the worst street in Rivet Town, and it's also where I grew up. My friends and I used to wander those streets thinking about where to find our next meal. That is, until Chief Oleg got me out and took me to the orphanage. There, I learned to read and write from Natasha. At the age of 10, I started to patrol the mines with Oleg, occasionally getting into fights with the local thugs. <laughs> that sounds nice. Nice? Are you being sarcastic with me? Oh, no, sorry. Life in the underworld is difficult. I shouldn't be speaking about it so lightly. Ugh, you're always so serious. It really gets on people's nerves sometimes, you know? Uh, right. Uh, what I meant was... I kind of envy you, Zila. For as long as I can remember, my days have been an endless cycle of studying, etiquette lessons, and training. Every day, all I hear is, Remember who you are, Bronya. This is against the architect's admonishments, Bronya. Ladies shouldn't use such foul language, Bronya. <laughs> Some may envy this kind of life, but I have felt trapped. When every choice and every goal has already been made for you. <laughs> you probably can't imagine how that feels. No, I can't. But more importantly, what kind of foul language were you using? <sighs> In the name of the architects, I shall stick this spear into your nostril. <laughs> That's it? Oh, that's nothing. Looks like I'll have to teach you some underworld slang before you go back. <laughs> no. No, that won't be necessary. <laughs> It'll be better than poking people's nostrils, at least. <sighs> I never thought that I'd be here having a heart-to-heart -heart with the future Guardian. As a kid, I didn't meet many people who lived in the overworld. I only heard stories from the grown-ups and figured you were all just a bunch of cold snobs. I've heard from some Silvermane veterans that before the orders were made to seal off the underworld from the overworld, there was no difference between the two places. Everybody ate the same food, chatted about the same topic, celebrated the same festivals. Even though times are different now, things like the joys and sorrows of life, the ties between people. These precious things must certainly still connect us all. If there is a way to bridge the gap between the two worlds, we can definitely go back to the time when you and I were not divided, when we could stand side by side against the eternal freeze and the fragmentum. <laughs> 
I'm not like you. I don't have that many grand plans for the future. But if that's the future you want, I'm willing to build this bridge with you. Thank you, Zila. Your trust is very important to me. Speaking of which, um, what are you going to do next? What Svarog revealed must have made quite an impact, huh? Yes. I thought I was prepared for anything, but... As long as I am the Guardian's successor, those truths will come out sooner or later. But why does my mother hide it from me? And why does she want me to hunt down the outsiders who know about the nature of the Stellaron? It just... It doesn't make sense. I thought it over. There's only one thing I can do. Go ask her directly. You... Uh, hold on. You're not really going, are you? A alone? You can't. This plan is... I've already thought it through, Zila. I am Madame Kokolia's daughter. That will never change. Be it my duties as her heir or as a Silvermane guard, I must face my problems head on. Even if... Branya. This is for you, Zila. Please help me pass it on to the outsiders. If... If I am unable to see you again, they'll know what to do. Okay, I understand. You've made up your mind, and there's nothing I can say that will change it. But remember this. If you run into trouble, I will come to save you, no matter what. Then I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> so, did you come to this spot when you were a child? Of course. I just didn't appreciate how nice it was at the time. <sighs> Very nice. Was a good sleep. I should go meet up with March and Denon. Took you long enough, sleepyhead. We've been waiting all day. I've noticed that our sleep routines don't match up. You either keep getting up in the middle of the night or snoozing away until the day's almost out. Unacceptable. You gotta work on your teamwork. Did you have a dream again last night? So that's why you slept for so long. Well then, let's go find Wildfire to discuss her next move and see if they have any new discoveries. Let's go! I can't wait to finally get back above ground! Oh, look who's here. It's the Bane of Svarog, the big hero of the underworld. And the other big heroes, Dan Hung and March 7. Were those lines rehearsed? Where's Natasha? Is she here? She has a bunch of other things to attend to. So I hope you don't mind talking to this <clears throat> old man instead. I speak on behalf of Natasha. By the way, sorry for keeping that whole thing about her being the actual leader of Wildfire a secret. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> My apologies. Natasha is always cautious, but she has no ill intent, as you must have noticed. She told me to make sure you return to the overworld safely. I gave it some thought, and I think the safest way is to ask this fellow for help. I brought you down. I can take you back up. Free of charge. Satisfaction guaranteed. There's no need to knock us out this time, right? Of course not. This time, we'll go back through the furnace core.
please, don't be like that. We have so much history together. Can't you have a little faith? Ugh, enough chatter. Just be a good guide. Hold on. What about Branya? Why isn't she here? She already went back. As you know, she has some things to settle with the Supreme Guardian. What? She just ditched us and went back? How could you let her? Exactly. She has a lot of responsibilities. I don't completely understand, but I trust that she's trying to solve the problem. Oh, right. Branya told me to give you this. She left us a letter. Hmm. Could this be one of those open in case of emergency letters? I've never gotten one of those before. Should we wait until we run into something dangerous? Stop overthinking and just open it. Brother and sister Landau? I know the brother must refer to Jepard, but who could the sister be? Oh, Sir Vol! So she's Jepard's older sister. Jeans sure are something else. Sampo, do you know the Landau siblings? Landau? Uh, yeah, we're all friends. I've mostly dealt with the younger brother in the past, but the sister? <laughs> She's much scarier. Uh, today's supposed to be a day of celebration, so let's not talk about it right now. We can set out at any time. Just come find me when you're ready. Well, my friends, are you ready to head out? Wonderful. Remember to bring enough food and drink to refuel on the way. We have a lot of steps to climb. Mother, I have returned. Rania, I thought, I thought I'd lost you. Where were you? Are, are you hurt? I'll fetch the butler right away. No, there's no need. I don't want to see Sebas right now. Sorry, Mother. I I'm fine, really. I just got into a few skirmishes down in the Underworld, but nothing I couldn't handle. The Underworld? Oh, I see. In that case, report everything you saw. Commander Branya. After the failed pursuit at Backwater Pass, the wanted outsiders and I were somehow taken to the underworld. Because of the difficult situation we were in, we formed a temporary alliance to help the residents of the underworld resolve a few issues of survival. We also defeated an ancient robot known as Svarog and learned some truths about the Stellaron. I'm listening. Go on. Madame Kakovia. It is my firm belief that the visitors from beyond the sky are not the villains we had imagined before. I witnessed them take up arms in the name of justice and risk their lives for the sake of others. I can also ascertain that they did come for the Stellaron, but only to relieve the disaster it has brought upon Bellabog. Mother, you've always known the truth about the Stellaron, haven't you? The responsibility of bearing that truth will fall upon me one day. Such is the burden of being guardian, to carry these secrets for eternity. So, I ask you to forgive my defiance, but I believe that the order to dispatch the outsiders was a mistake. To solve the problems brought on by the Stellar on the architects waited hundreds of years, and those outsiders may be the... the... Enough! What? Arrogant. 
ignorant. Oh, you disappoint me, Bronya. You merely glimpsed the tip of the iceberg, and now you think you know everything. You spend a short time with that underworld scum, and suddenly you have the audacity to question my orders. Guards! Take Branya. They are not scum. My entire life, everything you ever kept from me, I remember it clearly now. This time, this time I am standing my ground, Madam Guardian. And please, stop dismissing me with vague excuses. Tell me what you have seen. What exactly it is you are hiding. Why do you send the Silvermane Guards to die in the Fragmentum? Why have you abandoned the people of the Underworld? And why? Why did you have that sudden change of mind? Huh. I see. I knew this moment would come sooner or later. I just... Didn't expect it would be so soon. You want to know why I gave those orders? Is that right? Do you believe you're ready to learn the truth? Yes. I am ready. Mother. Then come with me, Branya. It is time you heard it. The voice of this dying world. Reliable Sampo. He probably guessed we'd ask where his hiding place was. No sooner are we back in the administrative district than he sneaks off. No way! The boss will recognize us! Plus, Silvermane guards are stationed nearby. We'd be offering ourselves up on a silver platter. Don Hung, what do you think? I think it'd be best to pay a visit to Serval Land now. So, you think we should avoid Jepard for the time being, right? He's an elite officer of the Silvermane Guards. It wouldn't be easy to get to him. Besides, if he hasn't been persuaded by Branya's letter, we'd be walking right into the lion's den. Hmm, makes sense. Guess we better head over to Sir Ball's workshop then? Hmm. But... We must keep a low profile. We're still wanted fugitives. What's wrong, Zila? Nothing. It's just a little... new. The last time I was on the surface, I was still a child. I have no memory of any of this. The overworld and the underworld. We've... We've been cut off for so long. I'm okay. Let's go. There are so many Silvermane guards on patrol. Is it usually like this? No. I don't remember the security being this tight last time. We might have something to do with us. The Supreme Guardian has probably learned of our arrival already. Branya. Safe here. 
My workshop has pretty good soundproofing and barely anyone comes in. Just what crime did you commit, exactly? They recalled a bunch of guards from the front line to track you down. It's unprecedented. Now they're patrolling the whole city and everyone's in a panic. Oh, we just... Not yet much. Rania said we could trust you completely. You mean to say you don't trust me completely? Good. That's smart of you. But you needn't worry. Kokolia and I aren't even on speaking terms. It was her that ejected me from the Architects. I refuse to stand with her. I don't believe you guys would do anything bad. And the Architects are going to need conclusive and publicly available evidence for me to think otherwise. Besides, I know the Architects, and if they did have any evidence, they would have released it by now. I know Kokolia's style. Get everyone into a frenzy first. Most people in a frenzy don't stop to ponder the details. Me? None. What Kokolia and the Architects get up to has nothing to do with me. My time is too precious for pondering. These days I just spend my time fixing things in this workshop and playing music. It's a pretty carefree existence. If I'm not careful, I'll start boring you all with sob stories from the past. Let's get back to you guys. If long lost Branya told you to come here, you must have something important to tell me. You can trust me. I know our paths have only crossed once before, but my intuition tells me you guys are good people. And I've got good intuition, by the way. <laughs> Try not to embellish the facts. So that's what's been happening. No wonder we hadn't heard from Branya recently. After all these years in isolation and without a single word from below, this is what's become of the underworld? I believe you. There's no way you could have invented all those twists and turns. What's more, we have Miss Zila here as living proof. As for the Stellaron... I know why Branya got you to find me. When I was still one of the architects working in the Scientific Research Division, I was researching the Stellaron. I never thought I'd hear that word again after being expelled by the architects. Come on, I'll tell you everything. Very few people in Bellabog know of the existence of the Stellaron. Those that do would never associate it with the Fragmentum or Eternal Freeze. But according to the data recorded in that robot, Spara, the architects dug out the truth long ago. The research results were purposely hidden away to ensure that the outside world would never know of them. Just my luck. Out of all the research topics I could have chosen, I insisted on the Stellaron. It's clear now that anyone who wanted to get closer to the truth would have been expelled or abandoned. Maybe I should be thanking Kokolia. All she did was push me out. She could have decided to take a more permanent measure. Yes. I never observed it directly, but... I used lab simulations and outbound surveys to establish a rough location. According to the survey results, the Stellaron is likely to the north of Bellabog, somewhere in the vast snow plains. We must locate it as soon as possible, ideally before Kokolia takes action. Can you tell us the way? Not a problem. I was thinking the same thing. But I'm afraid... Telling you might not be enough. The area to the north of Bellabog has been more or less swallowed up by the Fragmentum. 
If you want to get to the Northern Snow Plains, you'll need to get past the Silvermane Guard Restricted Zone on the front lines first. Even if you get past the Restricted Zone in one piece, you'll have a whole heap of Fragmentum to deal with. Correct. And it's different from the underground towns you described. The Fragmentum there has quite literally torn everything to pieces. There's no sign of life, despite the monsters. It sounds like the three of us and Zila might not be enough. Why don't we go back underground and get Wildfire to come with us? I fear we may not have the time. Hey, enough pessimism. Back in my official capacity days, I spent a lot of time in the North. I got to know the soldiers and officers on the front line very well. This calls for brainwaves, not brawn waves. How about I take you over myself? Really? Great! Phew. It's less scary if someone you know is leading the way. <laughs> I want to see the Stellaron too, you know. It was my research topic for over a decade. You don't get that many decades in life. <laughs> That's settled then. There's no time to lose. We should head out as soon as you're ready. My brother said he'd be around today. Find somewhere to hide, quick. I'll handle him. Japard, it's you. I didn't think you'd have the time to visit with things so tense on the front line. <laughs> things are manageable. The latest wave of monster attacks is slow. I'm back in the city to take care of a few matters, but I'll be back on the front line later. I thought I told you. Ah! Oh, yes. That's right. Sis, you look a bit pale. Did something happen? N no Why would anything have happened? You don't normally use my full name. Uh, you said you hate it when I call you bro in public. Well, I agree. It'd sound better if I started using your full name. Right, Brosit? You can call me whatever you like. Look, Serval, I'm here on official business today. There's something wrong with the barrier generator device, and the engineers in our unit don't know how to fix it. I need you to take a look. Those guys can't think outside the box. Of course they can't wrap their heads around my design. <sighs> I thought it was something big. Leave it here. I'll take a look. Sorry to trouble you. Why are you being so polite? Oh, and why is the city under curfew all of a sudden? Has something happened? I... I've been instructed to keep it quiet. Lil Jeppy. So grown up now, looking down on his civilian sister. Don't say that. Forget it. If I don't tell you, Pela will. Last night, Lady Bronya suddenly appeared. She entered Klopoth Fort without saying anything to anyone. The Supreme Guardian is worried that the three intruders may have followed Bronya out of the Fragmentum and back into the Administrative District. She issued a curfew for the entire city and ordered us to pursue and capture any suspicious individuals. Ah, so that's how it is. No wonder I haven't heard from Bronya. Is she all right? I'm not sure. She hasn't left Klopoth Fort. The Supreme Guardian just said she'd returned. Nothing more. <laughs> well, I was sure worried about her. After she disappeared, Pela's workload doubled. She said she barely had time to go out. She really does tell you everything. Oh, by the way, I left my Goethe Hotel limited edition flask behind last time I was here. Let me have a look for it. I think I left it over... Wait! What is it? You seem pretty off today, Serval. It's, um... Right! You remember how you neglected all those flowers to death? I piled them all over there during a bit of spring cleaning, and now they smell terrible! So, 
don't go over there. Seems like a strange reason not to take a look. Plus, am I supposed to believe you were spring cleaning? You must be up to more forbidden research. Never mind. This is your space, and I shouldn't intrude. I've got business to take care of. Bye for now. Uh, hey, wait a sec. Uh, those intruders. I wanted to ask. What crime have they committed? They're plotting to overthrow the architects and bring harm to the city. Huh. Reminds me of the accusations against me. Kokolia's methods haven't changed. Don't say that, Serval. I know that you're still nursing a grievance against the Supreme Guardian. But this isn't a joking matter. You're telling me off again? Fine. Whatever, bro. You better be going. Come listen to Pela in my next rehearsal. I will, if I have the time. The coast is clear. You can come out now. Phew. I nearly suffocated. What kind of plot device was that? I almost thought this my cool when he went for his flask. This is bad. Rania's in danger. We have to go save her. Attempting to storm Klipoth Fort by ourselves? Forget it, Zila. I don't care how skilled you are, I'm not sending you on a suicide mission. Rest assured, Kokolia may have changed over the years, but she never hurt Branya. I'm certain of that. You sound like Branya herself. I don't get it. You guys are against Kokolia, and yet in some ways, you seem to trust her completely. I was gauging his reactions just now. Did you see? Unless we have irrefutable evidence, he won't question Kokolia's orders. If you go after him now, our plan's as good as over. Come on, let's go to the restricted zone. If we can get ahead of the curve and find the Stellaron, Kokolia will be out of options. Is Bronya really safe? You care about her, huh? You must have become close friends. Uh, close is a bit much, but I made her a promise. Relax. She's the strongest girl I've ever seen. <laughs> I can believe that. Oh, they jacked up security, all right. How the heck are we gonna sneak in? Serval, we need one of those brainwaves. Leave it to me. Stick close, guys, and don't get spotted. This is a military base. Trespassers aren't allowed in. Wait, isn't that... <laughs> Serval! Long time no see. Well, if it isn't Franz. Long time no see. You still watching the entrance? Well, you see, I... Yeah, you haven't changed, Serval. Still nailing us to the wall. So, what brings you over here at this hour? And who are the guys behind you? My brother said the restricted zone energy lines were malfunctioning. Told me it was urgent. He doesn't trust those contracted maintenance workers. So, he got me in for free. These guys are my assistants. We need to overhaul all the installations here. Uh, I didn't hear anything about the energy lines malfunctioning. Oh, please. This is a technology division issue. Why would they tell you guys? Come on, let us in already. If the heating system goes down in the middle of the night, are you going to be responsible for all the frozen corpses? N no, that's uh, not something I could handle. <sighs> Seeing as you're Captain Jappard's sister, it should be fine. Okay, here are some temporary passes. Oh, and remember to give them back to me when you leave. Thanks, Franz. I'll put in a good word for you with my brother and get him to promote you. 
No, no, Captain Jepard hates all that under the table stuff. I'd have a better chance if you don't mention me at all. Price? See, that was easy. You're Jepard's sister, all right. <sighs> I don't want people to see me that way. I'm doing this. Do you see that mechanical gear bridge? When you cross over to the other side, you arrive at hell on Earth. They do. The Architects believe that Hell can exist on any world, a plight that will inevitably come to be without intervention. In the future, a terrible catastrophe will arrive. If, under Klopoth the Preservation's guidance, we fail to construct a barrier, that catastrophe will sweep away the stars, plunging all worlds into Hell. That's the belief of the Architects. But for us, Hell is an endless fragmentum, a few exhausted Silvermane guards, and the stench of death in the air. If we want to progress further north, we will need to cross that hell. Are you ready? Right on! I'm stealing that! <laughs> Let's go then. First, we need to think of a way to get to the other side. I help set the underlying mechanisms for this type of gear bridge. It's controlled via different terminals in combination. Let's go find them. Is Jepard on frontline duty a lot? Yes, but what made you ask that all of a sudden? It's so dangerous. Don't you worry about him? He's a Landau. Mechanical Fever released a new song. Did you hear it? Oh, sure did. Palo was on lead vocals this time. Scared me half to death. It's a completely different style. Even Mechanical Fever is changing. <sighs> Rock and roll's dead. There's no audience anymore. Don't be so pessimistic. They're just keeping things fresh. I thought Palo was pretty good. Nope. This terminal's offline. We can't control it from here. So what's the plan? Look for another. Every platform linked to the gear bridge should have a similar terminal. I never would have guessed that Jepard and you were brother and sister. I can't say I blame you. We're nothing alike in personality or interest. In our family, we have a strong military tradition going back generations. Many a Landau has died in their prime. There's not a lot of brother and sister time. Everyone just does their best to get on with their life. Darn! Can't activate it. It seems like someone severed the energy supply to the terminals. I... Huh. You know, the more I think about it, the more it seems deliberate. With the front line on high alert, they must have rotated the bridge to make it impassable. Then they cut off the energy supply to the terminals to avoid accidental repositioning. Or to prevent deserters from escaping. That way, even if the front line were to collapse, the Fragmentum monsters wouldn't be able to make it to the other side. Branya was right. The Silvermane Guards really are risking their lives to protect Bellabok. Just my conjecture, but I doubt it's far from the truth. My brother mentioned that they've had to use extreme measures to repel the Fragmentum monsters. Let's press on. We can't activate either of these terminals, so let's look for the energy supply installation itself. That's it! The thing's shaped like a giant iron ball! And it's behind a gate. What are the odds? Its formal name is the Mechanism Energy Hub. It's connected to all the energy lines. I would have thought it covers the entire restricted zone. Hmm. No wonder it's so heavily guarded. One unit for everything? 
That's a disaster waiting to happen. We learned the hard way. As long as we can gain access permissions to the hub, we can operate the gear bridge terminals. That's why I told them we were here for urgent maintenance. The frontline equipment needs servicing just as much as the rest. So that's why you went for maintenance. Way to go, Sir Vol. I thought you just came up with it on the spot. Come on, let's see if that guard over there will let us pass. Yo, evening soldier. Are you the emergency engineers? I saw you guys hanging around. Did you find the problem? Not yet. Everything looks normal so far. I think the problem is stemming from the energy hub. If you let us in, we can do a routine service inspection. I've worked on various iterations of this type of installation. <laughs> no, 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 no. No can do. No one gets near the energy hub without the security captain's encryption key. Uh, not even the Supreme Guardian? The Supreme Guardian? Hey, no games, you hear? No dice without the encryption key. Ah, darn, this guy's not stupid. You need the encryption key, right? Which captain should I bother, then? Uh, uh, captain Dunn's resting up ahead. Go and find him. If he grants you permission, I won't stand in your way. Done? <laughs> Why didn't you say so? No problem, we'll be back in a bit. Sir Vol, this Dunn, do you know him? You bet I do, we go way back. He's easy to talk to. Watch me persuade him. Hey, Dunn! It's been a while. I didn't know you made security, Captain. Serval, it's been a long time. You're still so... <clears throat> you look good. Allow me to introduce my assistants to you. They help me take care of business at the workshop. Everyone, this is Captain Dunn, an old friend of mine. He used to be an ace on the keys in the band. Oh, you play rock and roll too? Cool! Pleased to meet you. Hello. Oh, what's that weird smell? <clears throat> uh, Zachary! How many days has it been since you showered? Uh, I showered right before my shift. Hmm? What did you say? I... I haven't showered in two days, sir. Unacceptable! Especially in front of visitors. Apologies for the embarrassment, all. It's not a big deal, Dunn. Uh, you know, if you get a chance, would you want to get on stage with us again? My keyboard guy is pretty good, but I still miss our military days playing in the band. <laughs> that was a long time ago, Serval. I haven't touched a keyboard in ages. Besides, I'm stationed here all year round. I'm afraid I don't get many chances to return to the city. Though I don't stand on ceremony. Uh, how may I assist you? If everything's in order, you'd better head back to the city. It's not safe here. I've checked the lines. There don't seem to be any major problems. All that's left is the energy hub. The guard over there said that I needed an encryption key to open the gate. Can you help me out? Could you be any less discreet? <sighs> Anything wrong, Dunn? Uh, sorry, Serval, but can you tell me what Captain Jappard told you? Huh? Oh, uh... Let me think. Hey, sis, the energy supply lines in the restricted zone have malfunctioned. Those useless engineers can't find the problem. Something like that? And may I ask, when did he contact you? Uh, this morning? Yeah, that's right. He's on urban patrol duty today, right? That's why he popped round and asked the favor. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Captain Jepard just returned to the front line. I could reconfirm with him. Huh? Uh, hold up, he's back? Uh, that can't be. He was still in the city a little while ago. <sighs> you haven't changed, Serval. You're still a lousy liar. These people you've brought, they're... They're not workshop assistants, right? Uh... <laughs> Serval, it's not that I don't want to help you. But you should remember that I'm a Bellabog Silvermane guard. How about this? You can leave, and I won't tell anyone about this incident. But the outsiders must remain. <sighs> there goes the negotiation. I brought you guys here, and I'm standing with you till the end. Done. This concerns the fate of Bellabog. No, the fate of our whole world. Please, don't stand in our way. Serval! We used to rehearse together every day. You must understand. My rock and roll soul is to uphold the dignity of a soldier. Serval? Why? I'm sorry, Dunn. Time for a little nap. <laughs> He's just unconscious. Don't worry. <laughs> Stubborn fool. Strong, though. Wildfire lacks people like him. Got it! The encryption key! Quick, before we attract attention, let's... Attention. That's the enemy attack alarm. Every Silvermane guard in the reserve zone just became our enemy. But you're not dead yet! How can you give up that easily? We've made it up till now. Lose an arm and a leg for all I care. I have to lay eyes on the Stellaron. Quick, back to the energy supply hub. Anyone that tries to stop us is gonna find out a thing or two. If I'd known he had the encryption key from the start, I could have snuck in and taken it off him myself. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, Sila. Activating the gear bridge alone would have been enough to expose us. Someone there. Stop right there. Emergency fire evacuation system? Not that. Rock and roll dance floor atmosphere mode? Who the heck added that? And they used one of my songs! Gear bridge control terminal. <laughs> Still found it. That's it. I've reset the energy system. Let's go and operate the gear bridge terminal. Um, Sir Ball? Won't more Silvermane guards be waiting for us on the other side of the gear bridge? Yep. Then what's our plan? Well, either we reason with them or charge straight through the blockade. Let's play it by ear. Uh... Careful. There's a big guy up ahead. There's no other way. We'll have to fight. If we can beat Svarog, we can beat this one. Let's go! Energy restored. System online. Certification enabled. Come on, come on! 40%? 65%? 85%? We did it. We've gained access to the gear bridge. Let's move. Perfect. 
Okay. We need to get to the front line. We could have a problem. Your brother may be there. He probably is. Hopefully we don't bump into him, but if we do, we'll just have to try and talk to him. Are you sure you can convince him? I've probably got a 30% chance. Or less. <sighs> Meaning it could end in a fight. Haven't you noticed yet? Most of our convincing ends in a fight. We need to be sure, Saval. If we can't reach a common understanding with your brother, will you stand with us? Of course. My word is my bond. I said that I'd stand with you to the end, and I won't go back on that promise. Uh, before our next expedition, I need Himeko to teach me some negotiation skills. Beating people up all the time is cramping my elegance. <laughs> I haven't fought with Jafard since he enlisted. He could never beat me when we were little, but now... Serval. It really is you. Wait, Jepard, Listen to me. When the sentry reported to me, I thought there must have been a misunderstanding. The enemy alarm had to be unrelated to your entry into the restricted zone. Perhaps the intruders had taken you hostage. And yet... Step away from the intruders, Serval. Walk over slowly and stand behind me. You're different from them. I'm sorry. We have an understanding. I stand with them. <sighs> Give me a few minutes, just a few. I'll explain every- Enough, Serval. <sighs> Have you forgotten where we are? We Landau's ought to know this place better than anywhere. The outer reaches of the front line against the Fragmentum. Velabog's most strategic protective fortress. Every Silver Main guard here, every person here, is ready to sacrifice themselves. Ready to spill their blood for Velabog at a moment's notice. Yet here you are, leading fugitives into the restricted zone. Attacking my Silvermane comrades in arms, hijacking the energy hub. Are you really worthy of the Landau name? Why do you think I've come here? We found a way to dispel the Eternal Freeze, to seal the Fragmentum. It might be the only lifeline this world has left. If that were true, why wouldn't you report to Madame Kokolia? Why would you sneak into the Restricted Zone and create chaos? You don't understand. The one preventing us from getting close to the truth is Kokolia herself. You have all seen the Supreme Guardian in person. Do you think you can act as you please because she didn't recognize your version of events? Listen to me, Chapard. The origin and spread of the Fragmentum is linked to the Stellaron. The meteorite in the Architect's records, it's... I know about the Stellaron. It's exactly what the fugitives behind you are seeking. But the Madame Guardian has already revealed the truth to me. These people have ulterior motives, Serval. They want to steal this treasure from the Architects. The Madame Guardian has warned me before that you were indulging in fantasy. That you'd been exposed to forbidden knowledge. And that you would bring destruction down upon Velabog. I believe you, Serval. I believe you think you're acting with loyalty to the people. It's just... Guards, formation, arrest these people. We could be inundated with Fragmentum monsters at any moment. We have no time to waste on them. The forbidden is only forbidden to conceal the truth within. Kokoli is afraid that we'll seize on this knowledge, that the truth will spread far and wide. To save the world, we must risk it all. I've said my piece. Whether you believe it or not is up to you. Regardless, you should know by now your sister's never been one to back down. If there's something or someone you can't abide, you should stand up and resist. And if there's something you uphold, you should uphold it to the very end. Save your explanation for the judge. You are charged with sabotaging the Silver Main Guard restricted zone. In my capacity as captain, I hereby order that these fugitives be arrested. 
This isn't like our childhood game, Serval. You won't get any leniency from me. The barrier hasn't been fixed yet. Don't try and be a hero, Jepard. Uh, didn't I tell you? All our negotiations end in combat. come up against anyone this relentless. Uh, he just won't go down. He's as stubborn as I am. It could be an argument or a fight. He'll do both to the death. That's why he bugs the heck out of me. That's enough, Jepard. Take a look around you. You're the last man standing. Even if I am, I won't yield. I don't want you to yield through force of arms. That wouldn't be a victory for us. Yeah, our goal is the same as yours, Sir Balls and Branya's. We just want to preserve this world. There's no reason to turn against each other. Japard, brother, surely now you can see the need for pragmatism. Even if you don't believe my outsider friends, you should believe me. Maybe I've wasted your trust. In which case, Believe Bronya. Lady Bronya. <sighs> There's nothing more to say, Jepard. The decision is yours. As a captain of the Silver Main Guards, I am duty bound to carry out the orders of the Supreme Guardian. Lady Bronya is the commanding officer for the front lines. According to military protocol, if the front line directives of the commanding officer clash with those of the architects behind the lines, a soldier must remain at their post and await further directives. the Silvermane Guards, the Guardian's orders are paramount and absolute. But there is something of equal importance in the oath we take. The people of Belabog. If we lose the people, we lose the reason for our existence. Our fight with the Fragmentum Monsters is for the sake of preservation. But our fight with you? I fail to see the purpose. If you are truly able to prevent our endlessly unfolding misfortunes, then the people of Belabog are indebted to you. But if you are using lies to mask your true intentions, using my sister and Branya for your own ends, I swear by Klepoth that I will carry out your punishment without an ounce of mercy. They're not lying, I promise you. You must be Zila. You are a skilled fighter. Your combat style is nothing like that of the guards. Regardless of what you believe, these guys have been a great help to the underworld. Many people would vouch for them. Hmm. I'm sure. If you want to advance further northward, you must traverse an area entirely corroded by the Fragmentum. It's the only way to get to the snow plains on the other side. The guards can give you some time before the next wave of attacks is upon us. I gotta admit, I had a lot of misunderstandings about the Silvermane guards. They're fighting for survival here every day, just like Wildfire. The difference is, we're making a stand for freedom, while they're just carrying out orders. Put ourselves in their shoes. 
Easier said than done. Everyone has their struggles. But how can we understand them if we can't even see each other? Of course I do. I've understood them for a while now. But as far as I can tell, she doesn't need other people's understanding. She needs to understand her own heart. And it's the same with Japard. I could tell it took a lot for him to lay down his arms. I think I can already hear the storm on the other side of the city walls. Not a reassuring sound. I hope Serval's right. That supreme lunatic better not have harmed Branya. You see? Brothers and sisters need to have a scrap once in a while to get back on good terms. Ugh, enough apologizing. My ears can't take any more. Honestly, this would have happened sooner or later. You just gave me an excuse to bring everything forward. What's wrong with a bit of violent coexistence between siblings? Seems pretty normal to me. <laughs> I'm pulling your leg. Since I left the military, my brother and I have always steered clear of certain sensitive topics. <sighs> Thinking about it, perhaps he's just been looking out for my feelings, shielding me all along. Knowing my temper, my brother almost certainly went to great lengths on many occasions for me. I should be thanking him. Let's do this. I may never have come face to face with it, but this Stellaron cost me a nice, stable job. It's time to get even. Actually, I have another selfish motive. I want to prove to Kokolia that I was right. Once we've taken care of the Stellaron, maybe she'll go back to how she was. Sorry, uh, hardly the time for me to be obsessing over all this. As I mentioned, if we want to progress further north, we're gonna have to cross that hell. Still, look at it this way. Just another arena to showcase our skills, right? Now, if you're ready to get on stage, let's push for that standing ovation. As soon as the restricted zone gate is open, the monsters on the other side will turn out in full force. The guards will do their best to stall them and buy you some time. Once you've broken through the front line, there's nothing more we can do for you. You'll have to find out for yourselves what lies within the Northern Fragmentum. So, have you made up your minds? Understood. Keep your weapons close. This will be a fierce fight. Guards, open the gate. Are you dealing with attacks like this every day? It's a common occurrence. Guards, formation. <laughs> well, I'm gonna make sure I don't owe the guards any favors when this is done. Here they come! Steal yourselves! How many of them are there? The more the merrier. These guys are nothing. Yes. Hold the line. I told you, Jepard, the barrier hasn't been fixed yet. Don't try and be a hero. This is only the first wave. They'll have reassembled soon. I have to. Hey, Mr. Silvermane, listen to your sister. I can tell just by looking at you that you haven't fully recovered. <sighs> Outsiders, Zila, the second wave hasn't started yet. Make the most of this opportunity and make a break for it. Huh? Serval, aren't you gonna look for the Stellaron with us? My brother can't hold them back by himself. He wasted a lot of energy on us. He's my responsibility now. Besides, if I'm not here to help, I don't know what might happen in the next wave. 
I want to go with you. I do. I always wanted to catch a glimpse of the Stellaron with my own eyes, and now it's so close. But I can't abandon my brother and the other guards. I'm a Landau. It's up to you now. I believe in you. You've given me new hope. Get hold of the Stellaron before Kakolia realizes what's happening. Hey, March. Don't forget to take a picture of the Stellaron for me. Say no more! We're good at this, don't worry! Fragmentum activity is intensifying. Something's happening on Eurelo 6. Shouldn't we go down there, Himiko? <laughs> Have faith in them. Besides, this is her first trailblazing expedition. How will she be able to look back fondly without a few twists and turns? Are you bored, Welt? I understand. But we have lots of opportunities ahead of us. Let's leave the memories of this expedition for them. So you think we'll be safe, right? Yes. We haven't seen any Eon or Emanator-level imaginary reactions. Relax. This is a young person's adventure. We shouldn't interfere. At most, we could offer a little... off-site assistance. Is this... the Fragmentum Japard was talking about? Compared to this, the corrosion we saw in Backwater Pass pales into insignificance. Like there are loads of eyes staring at us. Serval said that the Stellaron was very likely hidden in the snow plains north of Bellabog. If we want to get there, I'm afraid we'll have to find the exit to this fragmentum maze first. This place makes my flesh crawl. Like there are insects under my skin. We have no guide and no way of detecting the Stellaron. We'll just have to advance gradually, and cautiously. Don't be disheartened. The stronger the Fragmentum contamination, the closer we are to the source. Oh, look! Up ahead on the ground! What is that? Be careful. Think twice before you interact with anything in the Fragmentum. This is... Bronyas! Right. She must be. This can't be a coincidence. It isn't them. It must be... a kind of echo? Some type of residual energy replicated by the Fragmentum. Which means they were definitely here, right? And it looks like they went that way! <laughs> Just in time. We had no idea which direction to take. Let's go. You still haven't told me what this place is, Mother. Seven hundred years ago, this was Bellabog's northern border, and the site of an ancient battle. Here is where Elisa Rand led the first Silver Main Guards in resistance against the Legion. Now, it is nothing more than an abandoned corridor, filled with the sounds of old world echoes. Don't let its fragmented appearance fool you, Branya. On the day the promise is fulfilled, these ruins will become the breeding ground of a new world. Oh, Mother, do you truly believe the Stellaron's promise? It summoned the blizzard beyond our walls and opened the door of the Fragmentum. 
It destroyed our civilization. It... And yet... The crime of our ancestors was their... Inability to embrace that destruction sooner. What? From the moment those intruders descended from beyond the sky, this world was handed a death sentence. But the Stellaron has reserved for us a thread of hope. There is a price to pay for new life, wiping away every decaying vestige of the old world, renouncing the meaningless and lingering struggle. This is the price the Stellaron demands. When the promise is fulfilled, Bronya, no longer will we have to squander our lives guarding this wasteland. You and I will witness the new world rise from the ruins. <laughs> a complex mechanism. How did they get past? Ah, <sighs> I knew this wouldn't be simple. Oh, wait! Wasn't there some big energy hub-looking thing back in that empty area? Let's go back and take a look. Maybe it's linked to this gate. Uh, I can't say I like the idea of interacting with our surroundings. Especially this deep into the fragmentum. However... However... There's no other way. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Huh. Even Don Hung the Sensible has his adventurous days. around hmm. it's clear that whoever designed these mechanisms didn't want outsiders to get through too easily let's keep looking for the energy hub look over there I think I can see the next unit well I see it too let's go Monsters guarding the energy hub? Seems like it. Hmm. Strange. Fragmentum monsters would usually. switch. We need to find a way around. I've never seen such a desolate place. At least in Rivet Town, you could tell that people used to live there. Rivet Town is only at the outstretched fingertips of the corrosion. Now, we're deep in the Fragmentum's heart. to ask you a question. Do you still remember those dreams you mentioned to us? I know you're wide awake right now, but I need you to try. See if you can recall the voice you heard. This is merely speculation, 
But perhaps the voice you heard is the Stellaron somehow conveying information to Kokolia. And the one in your body is resonating with the Stellaron on this world. Huh? You mean that Stellarons can communicate? I've never heard that before. Well, there's never been a human that could accommodate a Stellaron in their body. Then, aren't we walking straight into a trap? <sighs> yes. And Branya may well be the bait. Don Hung's speculations are usually right on the money. But even if we've guessed right, we can't go home now. <laughs> There's no way back anyway. At least Kokolia won't catch us off guard now. So what if it's an ambush? We're not about to lose now. I have to save Branya, beat Kokolia, and crush the Stellaron thing to dust. Uh, is this right? <sighs> if you want to get to the other side, we'll need to rotate the gear bridge again and go around. to Branya. Let's move! Uh, are these echoes too? Yes. The fragmentum here seems to have made a special connection with Kokolia. It's repeatedly generating forms in her image. I don't understand. Even if the truth is as you say, Every generation of Guardian has resisted the call of the Stellaron. And all of them have been wrong, Mother. Do you still not see, Branya? There is no right or wrong here. Some of them acted out of human pride, others out of human short sightedness. Our ancestors, including Elisa Rand. Spent their whole lives trying to prolong this civilization. Then, after all fell still, their memories were scattered by the blizzard. They spent lifetimes writing songs of praise that lauded the bravery of humanity, but couldn't spare the time to gaze up into the stars. To those entities of greater magnificence in the heavens above, a thousand years is but a passing moment. The attainments of insignificant beings, nothing more than a footnote. I shall not follow the Guardian's misguided steps down that blind alley of narcissism. If persistence is futile, then one must choose a new beginning. But, Klipoth, the Preservation, are they not one of the magnificent entities you speak of? Is it not their strength that has sheltered Velabog this entire time? The Preservation. Has the Preservation ever looked humanity in the eye? Nothing more than an arrogant delusion of the Architects. Oh, you will hear the real voice of Magnificence. Ronya, then you will understand my choice. Whoa, check this place out. Tables and sentry posts? There must have been silver main guards stationed here once. If there were, they left a long time ago. Huh. There might be valuable information here. Shame we don't have time to look for it. Looks like another completely new monster! Considering where we are, it would be surprising if we didn't run into strange enemies here. I don't care how strange it is. It's blocking our way. Let's get it! This enemy is completely different! If I didn't know it was a product of the Fragmentum, I'd think we were fighting a human! 
Unlike those random low-level fragmentum creations, this one seems to have a mind of its own. It seems to be able to use complex tactics. Look! Branya and Kokolia's echoes! They must have come through here. Uh, that means we must be really close, right? I sense that we're very near to the northern snow plains. This is where the first guardian led the Silvermane guards into battle. She made huge sacrifices for the sake of temporary respite. But the otherworldly legion did not tire. She soon realized that flesh and blood could not contend with so ruthless an enemy. When all was nearly lost, she chose to set her sights on the Stellaron and made the first wish. As for what came later, you know as well as I. So, the Eternal Freeze was a disaster brought about by a human wish? <laughs> Ironic, no? All the Stellaron did was answer humanity's call, and yet we kept its existence a closely guarded secret for centuries. Even going so far as to attempt to use it to control the Stellaron. Woeful. <laughs> Laughable. It? Now, oh, something created using otherworldly technology. An inhibitor that a corporation from the old world and the architects attempted to use to house the Stellaron. <laughs> oh. I know you have many questions, my daughter. Be patient. Soon you will have all the answers. It's that shadow of hers again. But... Branya's isn't with her this time. It's only a fragmentum illusion. Let's get a closer look. It feels like... This echo is different from the others before. Intruders. Uh, did did she just speak? You cannot approach. Not good. March, help the way. The Stellaron. Forward. Wherever they lead, it must be the end of the journey. I don't want to get to the end so soon. I want my journey to go on forever. This means that Branya is up ahead. And so is the fate of the overworld and the underworld. It's all in our hands. <sighs> Strange. I thought I'd feel nervous or afraid, but I don't. The only feeling I have is that none of this seems real. To be honest, you never really get used to them. We always used to rely on Himeko and Mr. Yang. The Express has traveled world after world. We are merely passing travelers, witnesses to part of a grander story. We invariably avoid getting drawn into turbulence that can decide the fate of a world, but there are always times when we have no choice but to act. Or to put it another way, this is one heck of a first trailblazing expedition. You hit the jackpot. I was about to bore you all with my gloomy reflections, but... On second thought, not today. Adventuring with you guys by my side has made me feel like no obstacle is too big. Right on! But 
You can say whatever you like. A good adventure shouldn't be full of rules and regulations. Helping those in need, befriending those worth counting on, and saving the world a few times along the way. Ah, it's freezing here. The blizzard's so fierce. Now the power from the trailblaze path isn't enough to stop the cold. It means that we're getting closer to the Stellaron and the heart of the Eternal Freeze. What is this? Oh, it's scary. It's like an insect trapped in amber. I bet the Antimatter Legion forces never thought they'd be swallowed up by the Eternal Freeze when they invaded this world. Huh, even in the ice, could these guys still be alive? I'm impressed you can still think up jokes right now. Did the architects build this? Very different from the uniform style of the buildings we saw in the city. Does it look like the palm of a huge hand to you? If Kakolia threatens us by taking Branya hostage... We have to save her. The Underworld... No. The entire planet relies on her. No. Do not resist, Branya. Accept the common will. No! I don't want this. Look upon their promised future, Branya! The world without her. Poverty without cold, without suffering. A world where people no longer have to pray like prisoners for survival. A world that we can guard for all eternity. 700 years ago, we tried and fought unceasingly, believing that the radiance of human nature could shepherd us towards rejuvenation. And to what end? A crushing defeat. Why, when faced with irrefutable strength, is our first thought always to resist, to cover our ears instead of hearing the call? It is the conceit and cowardice entrenched in the depths of human nature. Cast them aside. Break free of the chains that bind you. The Stellaron will lead humanity to evolve, and they will. Your brainwashing ends here, you witch! Zila? You came. I thought the blizzards had entombed you. You wish. We're not going down before you do. Branya, I don't know what happened between you and them. Even if you explained it to me, I probably wouldn't understand all the crazy details. But there are two things I do know. One, these guys have come through hell to get here, to seal this Stellaron thing. And two, do you remember what I said? If anything happened to you, I'd save you. Do you understand? Even if the damage is done, even if you've completely forgotten our promise, then, then I'm just gonna have to knock you out and bring you back myself! You. All of you. <laughs> Finished? I think I've given you long enough to bid farewell. It's time I told you my other reason. For bringing you here. No. <laughs> I want to witness your choice. I have told you all the truths there are to tell. The deal with the Stellaron, the wish I made to it. There are no more secrets between us. 
Many years ago, the voice of the Stellaron sounded in my ears for the first time. I was no different from the previous generations of Guardians. I withdrew, refused to hear. I was as you are now, bitterly defending the Architect's so-called preservation. My conviction was once steadfast, unparalleled. Until a sudden change arrived and threw everything into chaos. Another choice appeared before me. A subversion of the old order. And the welcoming of a new world. And compared to the illusory, ever more distant preservation, this was so... tangible. I have agonized, long agonized, over how to convey all this to you. Inevitably, the promise tomorrow will transpire. But if you were not there beside me to watch over that new world, I would descend into torment, Branya. Enduring torment. <laughs> Perhaps I should be thanking you, outsiders. The pressure you have imposed has at long last compelled me to confront my final... Yes. Branya, throughout your life, I have never forced you to submit to my will. You have always, will always have a choice. As then, so now. Choose, my daughter. <clears throat> Madame Kokoria, I am grateful to you for raising me and for allowing me the privilege of choice. But I... I am sorry, Mother. On this, our final occasion, I cannot stand with you. Hmm. You say that conceit and cowardice lie in the depths of human nature. <laughs> Perhaps you're right. Desperation sheds light on the darkest recesses of the heart. What about those simply struggling for survival? fighting for something better. I've witnessed their light on the front lines, in the underworld, in places you have overlooked. Our ancestors built this city, striving in the bitter snow to prolong our civilization. Even if this world is doomed to fall apart, we should allow humanity to pave the way to its final outcome. Not hand over our fate to the seed of ruin. Say. We are Guardian's mother, chosen from among the masses. Our duty is to preserve the world built by humanity. We are not gods. We are not arbiters. You seek to crush human nature underfoot while masquerading as an as an arbiter and a god. I cannot let you. So, this is your choice. I understand, Branya. Pity. Such a pity that you will never see that resplendent world. Unable to free yourself from the shackles of your mind. You know what? You were supposed to be the mother of the new world. The ground! It's shaking! What's happening? That sign! The fate of this city, of Bellabog, is sealed. Its future will unfold in our hands. And you will become the foundation of the new world. You must break the old to build the new. The Supreme Guardian commands you. Rise, engine of creation! It's one of the Architect's ancient machines! Watch out, all of you!
Hello? Can you hear me? Gosh, this signal's terrible. Yumeko, you finally spared a thought for us. What are you talking about? Weldon, I've been up on a thing you the time. You've got quite the trailblazing condition on your hands. So, how did that guy work? Or, importantly, how do you stop him from working? Over to you guys, I guess. We'll cover you! Antimatter Legion 700 years ago. So too will it wipe you from the face of this world! <laughs> Humanity, so weak and foolish, always overestimating their abilities. Let me bestow upon you despair! gaze. Could it be? The commercial district has fallen. We've transferred the residents to the outer municipal district for the time being. The garrison lost 26 fighters. But I... Go on, Jepard. Mental. What happened back there defied all reason. It was madness. Madam Guardian, if this continues... I know well the consequences, Jepard. You may leave. Monsters 
are searching this way. It's too dangerous here. is here on the surface. If our lines crumble, the underground will vanish in an instant. Our defenses here must be maintained at all costs. These are the choices we make, Branya. As a leader, you must harbor the courage and foresight to choose. You, me, and every Silver Main Guard in the city, all of us must carry out a higher mission. There will come a day when you must make your own choice. Do you understand? A higher mission? <laughs> it is too early, Branya. Still too early. You will understand when the time is right. Trailblazing expedition. We made it! But, uh, 
What are we gonna do with the Stellaron? It's usually Mr. Yang who handles it. I've informed Himiko and Mr. Yang already. They'll steal the Stellaron. Nice! The crisis on this world is basically over, right? Hmm. Huh. The storm still rages on. Now that the Stellaron is sealed, the Eternal Freeze will slowly recede. The Fragmentum won't aggressively expand anymore, but nor will it disappear. Eurelo 6 has a chance to return to life, but it will take time. <laughs> it will depend on the efforts of the people here. Thank you. All of you. Thank you. I'm... I'm fine. Don't worry. There is still much to do. The people will have felt the effects of the engine of creation. There are so many questions to answer, so many truths to reveal. I don't know whether I can get the people to accept all this. Can I really do that? Tell everyone about Mother's true motives? About a lie perpetrated for 700 years? No. No. No way. Zila? I... I don't know how to explain it. But I don't think there's any other way. In the Underworld, we tell the kids, things will be better tomorrow. Everyone knows it's a lie. But it gets them to sleep with some hope. Can you imagine the consequences if we told the people what happened here? They'd be devastated. If we can't trust the Guardians, who or what can we trust? <sighs> Mother died to preserve Bellaba. What? The visitors from beyond the sky told her the secret of the Stellaron. She knew that Alyssa Rand, the first Supreme Guardian, had failed to destroy it. And yet, she decided to challenge its power. A, a power beyond human comprehension. Supreme Guardian Kokolia sacrificed herself to dispel the dark clouds enveloping this city. From here on out, that's the truth the world will hear. What do you think? It keeps the hope of preservation alive, at least. It's logical, and hard to disprove. Why do we have to lie? I'm abstaining. I like telling the truth. But I get what you're trying to do. I must protect those that believe in the Architects. For many people, Mother was an outstanding guardian. The whole truth will live on in my mind. No mistakes. Madness evil. Dreams therein. I will be the one to carry that burden. Now, I must take over the duties of the Supreme Guardian. And discard my naive fantasies. I'm sorry, Seal. Please, protect this secret with me. Till the end of our lives. Say no more. I know what to do. Thank you. Well then, as promised, let's start rebuilding the bridge between the Overworld and the Underworld. Zila, can you tell everyone in the Underworld that the Stellaron has been sealed? 
and tell them the blockade will soon be over, and they will breathe freely again soon. Of course. Leave it to me. Nat's probably getting anxious about the delay. While you do that, I'll head back to the... administrative district I need to tell Jabard. Surf, huh? Are you okay? What's wrong, Branya? Do you feel sick? I'm... I'm fine. I need to... I need to hurry. Uh, she's exhausted! Quick, we need to think of something! Uh, you! Help me out here! Right. I almost forgot. You're still wanted by the guards. I might be an underworlder, but at least I don't stand out as much as you guys. That's settled then. I'll leave not to you. Remember to keep the secret. For Brun... No. For Bellabog's sake. So, wanna tell us what happened back there? Don't think you can just reappear on the battlefield with a cool weapon in your hands and skip the story. Um, thank you. That's not answering my question, though. She probably doesn't know what happened either. This wouldn't be the first time. Something similar happened when we faced the Doomsday Beast on the space station. Remember that glance from Nanook? Originally, we thought it was because the Stellaron was linked to the destruction. But now it seems to be more than that. We might need to speak with Mr. Yang to understand what's going on. Let's focus on the business at hand first. We shouldn't disrupt Himiko and Mr. Yang while they're dealing with the Stellaron. Let's talk once we're back on the Express. Mm, you're right. We need to finish what we started. Let's hurry up and find Natasha. Are you alright? Are you hurt anywhere? Do you feel dizzy? Tired? Or... I don't know, Sila. I feel... cold all over. Isn't that normal? This place is... Freezing. <laughs> oh, let's get out of here before you catch a cold, too. Don't worry. I'm a tough cookie. Here, hold on to me. Let's go. Look! There's a big crowd around the clinic! Do you think they felt the effects of the battle just now? Natasha! Oleg! Hope you didn't have to wait too long. Oh, it's them! You kids move fast. By the look on your faces, I assume you come bearing good news? Mm-hmm. You bet. You might not believe this, but we summoned up all our strength, and then... Uh, maybe she should do the talking. I'm no good at serious stuff. I'll probably say something I'll regret. We were there at the fight. We witnessed everything. Uh, sacrificed herself, huh? Sure, yeah, that's the whole story. <sighs> Kakolia, in order to save... Bellabog, she... <sighs> I see. So the massive tremors we felt earlier were a result of the battle, right? <laughs> Through patting yourself on the back? Thank you. <laughs> I can't even imagine what you've been through up there. I'm just glad everything turned out all right. Oh, what about Zila? Don't worry, she's all right. It took a big toll on Branya, so Zila took her over to the guards. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're all okay. Now that Kokolia's no more, I guess our Silvermane girl is about to become the next Supreme Guardian? Hmm. 
She sees things through and doesn't go back on her word. The underworld will thrive again under her watch. Mm-hmm. Oh, we brought you a message from Branya. <clears throat> the blockade will soon be lifted. The people of the underworld will breathe freely. Breathe freely. <laughs> That's been our wish all along. March, Don Hung, and you. Can I ask for your help again? I want to get this news out to everyone. It'll lift their spirits and bring them hope. Thank you. Choose whoever you like. Wildfire will take care of the rest. We've gotten to know a lot of Underworlders. Who do you think we should start with? Hmm, roger that. You can leave the rest to us. If everything goes smoothly... This should be Wildfire's final mission. Those kids better not have taken advantage of the chaos to go on an expedition. Hook does always talk about wanting to go on a Rivet Town adventure. Ugh, this could be bad. go and find them uh actually i sort of want to go play on the swings for a while i'll leave the seeking to you guys aha gotcha huh grown-ups where's julian huh. so he is a scaredy cat i knew he'd get someone else to talk to me You should be happy it's us and not Natasha. If she had found you, you'd be in big trouble already. Hmm, guess so. Anyway, I'm gonna go find Julian. Hug! <laughs> Got you again! Huh? What, what the heck are you guys doing here? Oh, wait till I get my hands on Julian, that traitor! his integrity what about your integrity huh you brought the other kids out here to rivet town didn't you i i did not the moles hold a vote on all our expedition destinations hmm fine i will but it better be exciting okay okay that's enough of that let's go and find julian Hide and seek update! Astral Express Crew 2, the Mole Zero! Hm. Celebrate while you can! Hide and seek is best at five, you know. Anyway, enough about hide and seek. You came all this way to tell the Mole something, so spit it out! <laughs> do you want to do the honors? Huh. Oh. Uh-huh. What's wrong? Why aren't you saying anything? Hook. Julian. Uh. <laughs> hey! Oh, your tears, Julian! You're second in command! No crying in front of grown-ups! 
<laughs> you three, listen up. Starting from today, you are the mole's number one rivals. Rivals? Why the heck are we rivals now? What are you talking about? Hook and Julian always wanted to defeat the villains on the surface and take back our homeland. But it sounds like you grown-ups just stole their thunder, so... <gasps> you think we're gonna accept defeat just like that? One day, the moles will be the heroes of the underworld and the overworld. Then everyone will sit and... Uh, sit and, um... Sit up and take notice! <laughs> um, I would have figured it out myself. I didn't need you to remind me. So that's why you were so silent. Hmm, if you want to be as awesome as us, you better start training every day. And start listening to Natasha. Training every day? Listening to the old witch? Will that really make us as awesome as you guys? <laughs> In that case, deal! <laughs> Julian, Alina, let's run back to the town. Training starts today. <laughs> yes, boss. Understood. Uh, Alina, I can uh, give you a piggyback if you can't make it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Yang put it nicely, but the reality is this. We sealed the Stellaron, but that's not going to solve the problems on this planet. There I was getting excited to tell everyone the good news. That's the cruelty of a Stellaron. Still, compared with some of the other planets we visited, at least this one has hope. So, should we tell everyone the deal? We should tell Branya when the time's right. Let's not dampen the spirit just yet. Oh, is everyone all right? Thanks for your help. <laughs> Sometimes face-to-face -face communication is more meaningful, don't you think? Now we just have to wait for the official news. I hope Branya doesn't keep us too long. Huh. Do you think Sparog and Clara felt the effects of our battle with the Guardian? I think they'll be fine. Plus, Sparog's devotion to Clara is even greater than his hostility to Wildfire. <laughs> if you're worried, you could look for them over at the Robot Settlement. Outsiders. For friends of Clara. How did you know that was Perkins? The, 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 thank you for rescuing Clara. Seems like Perkins picked up a stammer. Its language module must have malfunctioned. Can you take us to Clara? Outsiders are friends of Clara. Follow me. You have visitors, Clara. Oh, it's the variables. Are you trying to start another fight? There was a huge shaking just now coming up through the ground. Mr. Sparg said it must have been... Recalculating. Conclusion, engine of creation, 97.66% probability. The engine of creation was an immense construction machine created by the architects. It was not built to fight. Well, whatever, we won. Thanks to that giant robot, we were finally able to take care of the Stellaron. And Branya made a promise. The Underworld and the Overworld will soon be reunited. 
Which means that you, Sparog, um, you won't have to worry about preserving the underworld for the time being. March, everyone, thank you so much. I wasn't sure you guys would be able to do it, but... But now... Mr. Sparog, what do you say? You guys said you were travelers from other worlds, right? I want to be just like you. One day, I'm gonna go traveling to faraway places and make new friends. Calculation result. Update. Mission number 0001. Preserve the underworld. Complete. That's our Bronya! Quick as a flash! <laughs> she certainly moves a lot faster than some people I know. If you haven't got anything nice to say right now, zip it! You made it. <laughs> I thought you were about to miss out on a moment of history. No way! After all our hard work, how could we miss out on the final celebration, right? <laughs> I smell it too. <laughs> For Oleg and I, not to mention the other adults, Reopening the passageway means rediscovering old ways of living. A uh, return to normality. <laughs> Survival is no longer the top of the agenda. But for the children who were born into this era, who grew up in this isolation, this will be a new life altogether. Once you've tasted freedom, it's difficult to accept a life of separation and isolation. Those of us whose childhoods were marred by tragedy, we must strive to do better for the next generation. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Here I am talking your ear off again. <clears throat> this is a day to remember. We should welcome it with smiles. <sighs> if you have time, talk to the folks here. Every one of them will tell you about their excitement. And when you're ready, Let's go home. Finally. Finally, I can get back to supervising the cable cars. I thought I'd spend the rest of my life in those mines. Ah, it's you! The liberators of the underworld! You're the first passengers we've had since being sealed off. <laughs> It'll be my honor to get you to the surface in one piece. Oh, uh, I'm afraid you might have to make an exception, miss. My license has expired, but then I haven't had the chance to go up and renew it for ten years now. <clears throat> so, ready to climb aboard? <laughs> no problem. This car won't be leaving without you. So, ready to climb aboard? Brothers, sisters, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, gather round! The cable car passenger service is about to restart! Whoa! <laughs> Look at the big blue ceiling! <laughs> that's not a ceiling, Hook. That's the sky. <laughs> so this is... the overworld? The air here smells... different. <laughs> Less rust and geomero particles floating around. Take a deep breath, children. This is what freedom tastes like. Mm. I never thought I'd live to see the administrative district again. All those years. Uh, we've been through a lot, Natasha. <sighs> You're right, Oleg. It's funny. The moment I boarded the cable car, my mind was filled with everything I wanted to do on the surface. But now, I just want to sit down, zone out, and watch the people coming and going. And let the day just pass me by. 
Enjoy the peace and quiet, Natasha. We earned it. <laughs> it's Jepard! Is he here to meet us? He's still on duty. <laughs> he must have recovered quickly. Let's go say hi! Welcome back to the administrative district, Trailblazers. Trailblazers? First time anyone's called us that on this planet! <laughs> The Architects think it's only right that we should address you properly. Outsiders is hardly fitting anymore. Please allow me to apologize again for what happened in the Restricted Zone. You were only trying to help. I should have trusted Serval's judgment. Thanks for understanding. Lady Branya's inaugural address will begin soon. She asked me to pass on her invitation to you. Uh-huh. That's sooner than I expected. Is she well enough to... Not really. But Lady Branya insisted on delivering the speech as soon as possible. She wants the people to understand what happened. The address will be held at Everwinter Monument. I hope the three of you can find time to attend. Uh, uh, excuse me. Are you Captain Oleg? What? Well, I didn't think anyone would still remember my name after all this time. Of course we remember! Every young guard knows about your courageous exploits. Oh? Which ones might they be? The time I finished off that rampaging prowler with just three bullets? Or when I defended the outpost from monsters for six days straight without food or water? I haven't heard of either of them, actually, but I'd love to hear all about them. <laughs> sure. In which case, I'll cut my walk short and tell you all the grisly details. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling. When you stop and look back on the things you've done and wonder at all the obstacles you've overcome, the strength you've displayed, and then you start to doubt yourself and wonder if you've lost that drive. If everything were to happen again, would you still stand strong? You do? Oh, good. I mean, it's good to know someone in this world feels the same way as me. I haven't been able to sit back once over the past ten years. A moment's negligence could have brought wildfire crashing down. And the underworld would have been beyond saving. Staying vigilant wasn't the issue. It was the not knowing whether I'd ever be able to let my guard down again. No matter what anyone says, I believe your arrival was the reward for my long vigil. Thank you, Trailblazer. Look, there's a crowd gathering over there. Is the address starting soon? Hmm. Looks like it. Branya hasn't arrived yet, though. Let's find somewhere to wait. Guards! Formation! Whoa, this must be it! Citizens of Belabar, I kindly ask for your attention. Lady Branya Rand's inaugural address will begin shortly. Please remain orderly. People of Belabar, hear me! Today we gather here to celebrate our victory, but it was a sacrifice made by a mighty guardian that delivered us this opportunity. She dispelled an evil that cost us 700 years of suffering. And in the process, she paid the ultimate price. The sacrifice of Kokolia Rand ushers in a new chapter. The blizzard beyond the walls will die away, and the offensives of our Silvermane guards will begin to contain the Fragmentum's advance. In the far north, 
I witnessed with my own eyes the struggle between the late Supreme Guardian and the evil power that sought to destroy us. In her last moments, the Supreme Guardian told me her greatest regret. The order to seal off the underworld from the overworld. With the passage of time, she gradually came to realize the consequences of that decision. Although tortured with guilt, she could not undo the damage. In her final moments, she wanted us to mark the Stellaron's end by reuniting Bellabog. Overworlders and underworlders must embrace the dawn of a new age. Together, people of the underworld, I dare not ask for your forgiveness. I now know the reality of your decade of suffering. But I want us to work together. We know that without your perseverance and hard work, Bellabog will not recover its former glory. And the seed of civilization will not be preserved. And on that note, I'd like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to a few guests of the city. Most of you were not aware of their arrival. But it is thanks to them that our world now flourishes with hope. They made me realize that while we remain focused on preserving the ground beneath our feet, we should not forget to look up into the sky. I firmly believe that with the determination of everyone, our world, the world the Trailblazers call Yarilo Six, will no longer be alone among the stars. But before we accomplish that goal, I humbly ask you to follow me into the future. I, Branya Rand, the 19th Guardian of Bellabog, hereby take my oath. Lady Branya! Lady Branya! Long live Bellabog! We're back! March, Don Hung, and you. It's wonderful you made it to the address. Sorry, I know the invitation was very last minute, but I needed to get the news out as soon as possible. The longer people waited, the more rumors started to swirl. The situation risked spinning out of control. Yes, I'm fine now, don't worry. My mother... She tried to force the voice of the Stellaron into my head. It was a terrible feeling. I, I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't shown up. That was some speech, Branya. If I had to talk like that in front of a huge crowd, I'd be shaking head to toe. It was all just a bunch of palatable lies. I hope you never have a similar experience, March. Mm, I prefer to be honest with the people. But I also want to preserve their hope. Don Hung, wanna talk about Mr. Yang's findings? Allow me to explain. Which means... the Fragmentum has already taken root by this point. Even though the Stellaron is sealed, we won't be able to reverse the damage immediately. No, no need for apologies. You've gone out of your way to save this world. You nearly lost your life. I have no right to ask for more. Besides, I agree with Mr. Yang. Ultimately, the fate of Bellabog is in the hands of its own people. In that case, as a leader, 
I must give you a promise of the same weight. We will hold out with everything we have until the day you trailblazers return. Even if it takes another 700 years, the children of Yarilo 6 will look up to the sky with hope in their hearts. So long, my friends. May the preservation bless your journey. Congrats! That was one heck of a first trailblazing expedition! Worth celebrating, I'd say. Two and a half? What? That run of the mill, huh? <laughs> My scoring criteria are different from yours. <sighs> anyway, we should be asking you. Any thoughts you want to share? <coughs> Equally unforgettable, I'm sure. Anyway, don't worry about the future. Live in the moment. Let's go for one more round in the administrative district. I want to take more photos. Branya said she's willing to wait 700 years for us. Huh. Don Hung, how long can humans live for? Mm. Forever. But in that scenario... They can't be considered human anymore. Yikes, so serious. I was just curious. Here we are, Everwinter Monument. Photo time! Oh, Kayla and Hook are here too. Let's make sure we get them in the background. tell you to not before <laughs> it's you three oh, come on in I was just talking to Clara about you how have you been big sister mr. Vall's workshop is amazing there are all kinds of things I like it here a lot mr. Vall Clara is such a well-mannered kid meanwhile the architects children are still calling me auntie and making me feel old line we're here to take a photo remember photo <laughs> this feels like one of my fan meetups <laughs> anyway for you guys I do autographs for free photo oh I remember when I was little mr. Sparrow took a photo for me over here Clara want to learn some cool poses <laughs> Pretty great. I wish the photographers at my shows had your skills. Uh-huh. Am I really that short? I thought... <laughs> Don't worry. If you eat like Don Hung, you'll be as tall as him one day. <laughs> uh, I'll let that slip. Here, keep it. A little farewell gift from the Astral Express. Huh? You're leaving so soon? I understand. Well, this photo will always be close to my heart. I'll make a copy for you too, Clara. Th thanks, Mr. Vall. Big sister, March, Dan Hong. Thanks for taking care of me. Safe travels. If you have time, please come back and visit me and Mr. Svara. <sighs> Uh, that's enough sightseeing and photo taking to last me a while. Time to head back to the Goethe Hotel for a good night's sleep. <sighs> we can sleep when we're back on the express. Not so fast. Last time we were here, that evil Madam Guardian interrupted us before we'd gotten the most out of our luxury suites. Don't you think we should make up for it? Come on. Kimiko and Mr. Yang are grown-ups. I'm sure they'll cope without us for one night. Besides, don't you want to chit-chat with the locals now that Bellabog is full of life again? I know I do.
the end of your journey, all that perplexes you and troubles you will resolve. Oh, it was a close thing, all right. Good thing it dawned on me. Hey, Sampo doesn't have to be a protagonist, right? <laughs> the likes of us are better suited to, uh, shadowy comic relief, huh? Turns out the Astral Express crew is more fun than I expected. <laughs> you, you liked it? Really? <laughs> Told you so. No, no. I'm in no hurry to leave. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, Epsilon? <laughs> What fun can you get out of a giant vanity fair like that? <laughs> True happiness always entails the manifestation of the dignity of mankind. Now that's a quote I live by. Well, bye for now. Send my regards to the guys and girls in the tavern. Oh, and don't forget to say that Zempo Kaski will catch them for the next one. Time to make my curtain call. To you, my dear audience, I dedicate my performance. I wonder, did I bring a little more joy into your lives? <laughs> you don't have to answer that, but if the answer is no, then you'll break my heart. We should be getting back to the Express. Time to find March and Dunhung. Morning! How did you sleep? I'm full of energy myself! You poor thing! I'll go check the lunar calendar. Today might be unlucky. Did you get Himiko's message? It's time to go. The conductor will nag us again if we put the express behind schedule. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Well, pack your souvenirs and stuff. Back home we go. Here we are at last. <sighs> it's sad to say goodbye. <sighs> Nothing lasts forever. <laughs> You'll stop feeling sad the moment you set foot on the express. Heartless, you know. Priorities? What do you mean? Are you saying rebuilding the underworld isn't one of your priorities? Uh, of course not. I I'm just saying we have limited assets and we need new parameters. Assets, parameters. You sure love your fancy words. Ugh, forget it. Leave it to me. I'll go down myself. <gasps> Come on, Zila. I won't leave you to- Look, Ronya! There'll be plenty of difficulties waiting for them, right? Yes. Their future is filled with even more uncertainty than ours. But we will prevail here, even if it means arguments like this go on forever. <laughs> they won't go on forever if I win them. Yes, General. Watch this person carefully. <gasps> Do you remember me? I remember. Of five people, three must pay a price. <laughs> you are not one of them, Jin Yuan. <laughs> of five people, three must pay a price. You are one of them. Hold on. I I'll, I'll be there soon. What did I tell you? He's definitely sleeping in. We trailblazers can go days without sleep. 
but when we do hit the hay, we have to make up for it. Anyway, no point wasting our time in the corridor. The conductor wants us to attend a warp navigation meeting. Same old location, apparently. And we can't be late. Let's head over. Oh, by the way, you drew the short straw. It's your turn to wash the coffee cups this week. Morning. You're very punctual. Ah, uh, no need to worry. Dun Hung's rarely late. I'm sure he must have a good reason. Dun Hung's situation is special. We hope to protect him to the best of our ability. The trailblazing of Eurelo 6 is drawn to a close, and the Astral Express must depart for the next planet. Not telling yet. We'll make an official announcement in the meeting, but I'm keeping you in suspense for now. The meeting will start soon. Passengers, the work navigation meeting has officially begun. Firstly, I want to congratulate you, the Nameless, for successfully resolving the problems at this stop. The Express is now able to continue along the Star Rail. The three of us actually pulled it off, huh? It's time for your conductor... <clears throat> that's me... to reveal the name of our next stop. Long time no see, Astral Express crew. It's Kafka. I came at a good time. We're all here. Every single one. No need for the mysterious introduction, Stellaron Hunter. <laughs> Himiko, correct? Apologies for interrupting your little get-together, but I'm sure once you've heard my request, you'll forgive me. I'd like you to make a... destination alteration. I've seen your face before, Stellaron Hunter. Even if it was only on a Corporation Wanted poster. They were offering quite the bounty. Dead or alive. Do you know the figure? Doesn't concern me. Then again, a Corporation bounty is a compliment, not an insult, don't you think? The higher the figure, the bigger the compliment. You wanted criminals sure know how to look on the bright side of things. I will say, Herta certainly paid you all a compliment. A maniac that claims he can see destiny, leading a bunch of wild lunatics in pursuit of the most dangerous objects in the universe. And Herta doesn't give out compliments very often. In pursuit of the most dangerous objects in the universe, huh? Well, in that sense, you... Astral Expressors and I are cut from the same cloth. You're in the wrong place, Kafka. We're not about to accept your request, and we're not about to get into bed with a Stellaron Hunter. It was nice talking with you. Perhaps next time you'll be willing to pay us a visit in person, and we can continue our little discussion. Have you guys heard of the Law Foo? The Sienjo Lawfu? It belongs to the Hexa fleet of the Sienjo Alliance. We've heard of it. Hmm. But what you haven't heard is that it's currently very close to you. A couple of warp jumps away, in fact. Not to mention, 45 system hours ago, a Stellaron burst occurred on the Lawfu. An unexpected calamity, don't you think? What exactly are you Stellaron Hunters trying to do? The Sienjo Alliance aren't us. They won't give you time to explain. Once you draw the attention of the hunt, you become their prey. The Alliance will hunt you to the end of the universe. Stop speaking in riddles, Kafka. Say what you have to say. It's simple. That Stellaron has nothing to do with us, but the Sienjo is convinced that we're responsible. My companion, Blade, has been taken away by the Cloud Knights. I want to bring him back, resolve this Stellaron crisis, and clear our names. 
Nothing to do with you? Yeah, right. Sounds like a weird coincidence to me. You just happened to show up after the Stellaron burst? Also, we're not your friends. Why should we care if a Stellaron hunter is innocent, hmm? No! Why are we listening to her? The Alliance is strong. Is a single Stellaron burst really too much for them to handle? We're the crew of the Astral Express, not some squad of Stellaron stealing super specialists. You could, of course, not get involved. Knowing that the Stellaron hasn't yet affected this region of space, you could make the jump and arrive at the next world. But sooner or later, the Star Rail here will be more blocked off than it was before. I can tell you what the future holds. If you don't go to the La Fu, the Stellaron will eventually contaminate the entire ship, and over half of the inhabitants will perish. Oh, you brave and fearless trailblazers, you benevolent, nameless. Can you really remain indifferent to that? This companion of yours, Blade, he'd perish too, right? No comment. Here are the coordinates. It's up to you how to proceed. Our destinations may differ, but the orbits of the stars will eventually converge. See you later. <sighs> March, get done hung. Whoa, what are you doing here? I gave him the lowdown. Hey, remember what I said, okay? We're gonna vote against it. I'm not gonna take orders from that woman. Are you okay, Don Hung? March brought you up to speed, I assume. <clears throat> I'm fine. And yes, I'm up to speed. Good. In that case, with regard to the matter at hand, let's vote to decide our next move. Our Stellaron hunter claims that a Stellaron burst has occurred on the Sienjo La Fu, and that we're in the vicinity. If we head for the La Fu, we may have the chance to save many innocent lives. However, it's also possible that our Stellaron hunter is lying and using us for her own ends. Neither Welt nor I believe that she's telling us the truth. But we can't just ignore the intel she's given us. So, we're about to hold a democratic vote on whether to set a course for the Sien Zhou. All those in favor, hold out your hand. All those against, keep your arms by your side. Three, two, one. Three against two. Well, it looks like the Astral Express crew has a majority vote to head for the Sien Zhou. <sighs> I calmed down and thought about it a bit. If it turns out that woman isn't lying, then a lot of innocent people are gonna get hurt. Now's the time for thinking about other people. <laughs> All right, all right. I think we're all used to March's modus operandi by now. So, Don Hong, you want to stay here? Yes. I'm staying this time. In that case, Welt, ready for a trailblazing expedition? I know you've been itching to get out there for a while now, but make sure you take good care of the two of them. Don't worry. Destination Sienjo, here we come! The train is about to make the jump. Five, four, three, two, one! Whoa! 
So that's a Xianzhou ship? It looks even bigger than Eurelo 6! For the Xianzhou, these ships are their planets. Terrestrial environments are cradles that allow civilizations to survive and then develop. Some of those civilizations progress further, constructing spacefaring vessels, which allow them to voyage into the unknown. The Xianzhou Alliance is one such civilization. I've only glimpsed it a few times, but it's as magnificent as I remember. You okay there? What's with all the lonely nostalgia vibes? <sighs> this is the Astral Express. I repeat, this is the Astral Express. We have arrived in Xianzhou territory. Requesting landing permission from ground control. From the bridge, I mean. Welcome, lawful skyport, Starskiven. Please await transfer. Please wait transfer. Please wait transfer. <sighs> Something's not right. The signal is still repeating, but no one is guiding us into dock. Maybe the Stellaron Hunters were telling the truth. It seems like something really did happen to the Sienjo. A vessel arrives at a deserted spaceport. Isn't that how, like, loads of horror movies start? Let's not let our imaginations get the better of us. Please wait transfer. Please wait transfer. Please wait transfer. Still the automated signal? Yes, it's still on repeat. Ah, oh, there we go. The Jade Gate now opening. On behalf of the Xianzhou La Fu. Welcome, guests from afar. Please proceed to dock in accordance with the guidance. Huh? Is this still automated? The signal broke off. Seems that's all there is. We should get going. Himiko, stay vigilant back here on the Express. Relax. I've got Don Hung here with me. <laughs> yes, but I won't be putting my feet up. There's a lot to take care of here on the train. Make sure you're properly prepared before you set off. Before we set off, I need to clarify the aim of this journey with you. The Stellaron Hunters have given us a lot to consider, and a lot to doubt. But the most important part of this expedition is... Precisely. The Stellaron Hunters clearly have ulterior motives. However, knowing what they're all about, and given the focus of Kafka's words, I have no doubt that the Sienjo is dealing with a Stellaron. The Alliance and the Express haven't had any previous dealings, so our arrival might not receive the warmest welcome. But as trailblazers, we're not in this for fame or gain. We just need to do everything in our power to assist the Sienjo and eliminate the source of disaster. Always keep that in mind, and don't forget the way of the trailblaze. Explore, understand, establish, and connect. Yeah! Let's go.